Tonight's program is going to be discussing one thing. We're going to start in one area, but I can probably assure you that we're going to end up somewhere that may surprise you, especially coming from this microphone. But I feel like it is incumbent on me to give folks a heads up. And so I'm going to endeavor to do so. Also, I'll have an announcement or two to make during the program here tonight as well. So be looking for that also. All right, here. Um, I posted this article from The Root. And as you know, over there at The Weed, they are never stopping in their eternal task toward permanent foolery. And boy, they've taken it to a whole new level. Michael B. Jordan, perhaps the most eligible bachelor in Hollywood and entertainment right now. The young man is basically a ticket to ride. He's got the whole world laid out in front of him. And after all these news outlets claiming that Lori Harvey was doing so great and doing so wonderful and everything so over her, she done fell off a damn cliff as I predicted and told over and over and over and over again. She peaked with Michael. That's it. Her mama doubled back to Steve Harvey decades after Steve Harvey blew up. Her daughter already met the man. This is it. So there you go. Ain't gonna be another Michael B. Jordan. This guy is a phenomenon. That's it. If you had a chance with him, you get one shot at the title and it's over. So the same media outlets looking at you, The Root, and the rest of them who tried to act like she was the prize and oh, she's got all this laid out in front of her and oh, she's dating Damson Idris. Nah, okay. All that damn happy talk and wishful thinking has gone by the wayside. Reality has reared its gruesome head. But they're not done yet they're not done yet so now in an absolutely mind-boggling shameless article here from the weed i mean the root take a look at the depths they've gone to here don't you think michael b jordan should date one of these hollywood ladies wait a minute First of all, eh, that's a bit of an exaggeration to say these are all Hollywood ladies here, quite frankly. That's a bit of an exaggeration to make there, but you know what? I'll be charitable. I'll be a little charitable here. I'll be a little charitable. So, this article from The Root, and we're going to slow bake this one here because, boy, this is part of a full frontal assault on black men and attempting to police black men's sexuality and black men's choices attempting to control us and to tell us what we should want and to tell us that we need to simply accept whatever we're given that black men need to perform at an ultra high level and then after we've done that then everybody else is entitled to get our productivity. Not that we should get a fair deal, not that we should get a square exchange, but that everyone else is entitled to it. And before now, these outlets were a little smarter and not quite so brazen in this kind of thing. They used to be a little smarter about it, but yeah, they've they put down all the polite talk and all the polite language they put that to the wayside. And now they're just outright telling us here that as black men, our job is to work our asses off to become the best we can be, to become the pinnacle so that we can go up here and commit ourselves to somebody's leftovers. What? Yeah, it's true. I want to show you this article here and there are levels to this. There are layers to this. I want you to pay attention. This is not time to go ADHD. I want you to pay attention to this because this is serious. No, it's really not a joke. This is actually serious. 
Hollywood's most eligible bachelor, glad we all agree, talks about loneliness and being back on the market, but is he really ready to mingle? Take a look at all these accusations. Take a look at all this accusatory language here. That he needs to convince them of something. That he needs to be controlled. Dude, don't you think, don't you think Michael B. Jordan should date one of these Hollywood ladies? Is he really ready to mingle? What? I mean, you're outright telling him what he needs to do. I mean, now they're just using the straight up language. You should be doing this. By this uh, Chanel Janai. You can look her up if you'd like to. I won't bother you with it, but she's one of the usual suspects. Michael B. Jordan, one of Hollywood's most eligible bachelors, is back on the market just in time for yet another hot girl, or rather, hot boy, summer. Damn! Well, there's a new one for you now, isn't it? Hot boy, summer. Oh, huh. didn't know such a creature existed. I guess folks are getting tired of their pathetic little girls trips. Yeah, that's that's a damn bummer, isn't it? Hang out with a bunch of chicks, no gifts, nothing expensive going on, nothing lit happening. When the evening's over, y'all just retreat back to your individual hotel rooms. What a waste of a vacation. She goes on to say here, but make no mistake, while he may be single, he's not all too ready to mingle and get back in the dating pool. Now, I want you to keep your eyes on these words. These are not just words. These are terms that are meant to explain a power dynamic. She's not simply describing Michael B. Jordan's condition or suspected condition. We're leading in a direction. That term, dating. Now, let's be clear. When women talk about dating, what are they referring to? When women say they're dating, well, I was dating these guys. You ask them about their status. Well, I've been out dating. Well, I've been dating. Yes, we were dating. Well, I was dating three or four guys. I've been dating. I want you to understand that. Now, when it comes to females, they can just say they're dating and they're exploring their options and everything else is there is just fine. But for men, for black men specifically, it's, well, is he ready to get back in the dating pool? And dating means serious relationship. It doesn't mean that he has some companions to take care of his sexual needs. It's, oh, are you ready to get serious? But for the women, it ain't got to be serious. It can be eh, whatever they want it to be. So do you all get that? For the women, they don't say it like this. For the men, it's, eh, need to really get serious now. Dating for you means get serious. Dating for us means, eh, whatever we need to be, yeah. The Black Panther star said as much in a new interview on the On Purpose with Jay Shetty podcast, where he divulged that while a relationship and eventually having a family is something he desires, He's having a hard time figuring out where that fits into his robust schedule and is consequently feeling lonely. Now, folks, when it comes to women, that's never a problem. Why the women can go ahead and be just as free as they want to be. Why, if the women want to pursue their job or their career or their degree, if she goes off and has five or six bastard kids and then comes to you and then tells you, hey, I want you to take care of all this here while I go and pursue my career and I don't want to have any more kids. Well, that's all legit. I, I thought that was all legit. But for the men, they're applying the pressure. For the men, they apply the pressure. Well, Michael, you 37 years old, don't you need to be getting serious about settling down? So for the men, it's you need to settle down. For the women, it's do you. Whatever you want to do. And the men, 
need to stop trying to police your sexuality and tell you what to do. You need to seek your peace. You need to find your peace. Oh, what's the other thing that all your pastor, pimp, bastard preachers up here and say? Just because you're alone doesn't mean you're lonely. Now for Lala Anthony, they didn't write articles like this talking about her. Is she ready to mingle? Here are the men she needs to date. Now they didn't do that with her or Tia Mowry or Jody Smith there in the middle. A lot of folks have been asking about her. She has a delicious skin tone and well, we're not the only ones who thought that. We'll come back to that later. Zaddy thought the same thing. In any case, they don't talk to the women like this. The women don't get this treatment. Interestingly enough, Quote, there's a loneliness that I have. The responsibility that you have is isolating and the weight is isolating, he said. The worst part of that is the feeling that nobody really understands. Boy, he busting out that Isley Brothers, ain't he? I'm giving it to you, Michael. He is milking that most eligible bachelor thing. He's letting the ladies know, hey, come see my next film. I'm, I'm single, I'm available. So emotionally, I want that to register to you in that way that... I, 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 I ain't just jiggaloing out here. I'm, I'm, I'm lonely, ladies. It's, I'm by myself. And I wish I had a lady who understood what I'm going through. Michael, five stars to your brother. Five stars to you. <laughs> Got to give it to you. He is working that. That's what you're supposed to do at his level. He got to keep the ladies understanding. It's like, hey, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. Pop my collar to you, Michael. You, you, you're keeping the ladies on their toes. Sometimes falling into the spaces of being alone, feeling alone. I go back and forth. Now there's the key line right there. I go back and forth between wanting partnership and then not knowing what's the best partner for me. In other words, Michael would like to keep his options open. Shout out Damson Idris. Michael wants to keep his options open. So he's saying, but yeah, I, I, I'm torn between two, two, two desires here. I'm torn between the two. I'm torn between wanting partnership and then eh, I just need somebody for the weekend. It's just, I ain't really trying to get in nothing serious. So who is the best partner for the Creed director? While we're not certified to play matchmaker, there are undoubtedly a handful of women both in and out of Hollywood who would jump at the chance of being on his arm and who may fit the criteria. I mean, he wasn't picked as people's sexiest man alive for no reason. Now look at the next part here. Maybe someone like Tia Mowry. What? She's been in the limelight since she was a child, just like Michael B. Jordan, and is still consistently working. She more than understands the lifestyle, or maybe someone like Jody Turner-Smith. I mean, you take a look at this garbage. The two of them together would be a feast for the eyes, considering how breathtakingly beautiful she is and how handsome Jordan is, or maybe even La La Ant. Did, did 50 Cent and them pay for promotion? La La Anthony. Northwest is apparently trying to hook them up. Maybe this is the leverage they, they need. What in the deep fat fried hell is this? What in the deep fat fried hell is this? Okay, let's be clear about a couple of things here first. First of all, they choose a bunch of aged out females. That's the first thing. They she sits up here and selects not one, not two, but three. Two of them are completely aged out. The third one in the middle is on her way. Women who don't want no more kids. But furthermore, that's the other shoe that drops. First of all, the women are old. Second of all, they bringing you another dude's kids. Damn! 
She, why in the hell is it she didn't choose another Laurie Harvey? You thinking that this is the best you can do? Nigga, please. This is what they come to black men with. So let's go ahead and run down the roster here. First of all, Tia Maori, a whacked out, mentally, emotionally imbalanced individual who broke up her home. She had a husband. Wasn't cheating on her, wasn't beating on her, wasn't nothing else. Eh, I'm tired. I'm bored. And her Instagram is a shrine to narcissism. And yet that's what, that's the only suggestion you can come up with. Not Halle Bailey, Chloe Bailey, even if, by the way, they skidding off the damn rails too. So that's a wrap for them. Forget about it. They don't bring him to somebody who would actually be suitable. Someone who has a runway in front of them. Someone who is biologically compatible. No, nope, we just go and go buy the, get to grab the damn retreads. Let's go grab some used up retreads and throw that at the most eligible bachelor. They don't go and find the most eligible bachelorette. They find three retreads. Tia Maori is exactly the kind of female you want to stay away from. She got crazy eyes and the attitude to match. The red flags over her are overwhelming. And that's the first one that this clown writer sits up here and invokes the name of. A chick who doesn't qualify mentally, emotionally, socially, or anything else. When's the last time Tia Maori was a part of a hit anything? Tia Maori is a one of these biracial, self-absorbed, narcissistic. I was the g best reader in class and the smart, the smart Negro kid back then. Debutante syndrome out of this damn world. She's nothing but a walking headache and a self-saboteur. And if you sh shackle yourself to her, you'll be in the same boat. You'll be in the same boat. In the middle there, you have Jody Smith. Okay. Jody Turner Smith. What can I say about Jody Turner Smith? There are a number of things about her that just ain't right. Number of things about her that just aren't right. Just not right and by the same token are frighteningly familiar. What the hell kind of heinous disrespect is this? What the hell kind of heinous disrespect is this? To sit up here and throw yet another single mom at him. In her case, a divorcee who has not respected black men. Okay. Yeah, for all the fellows who are saying, boy, she's got a great skin tone. Yeah, she sure does. And you're not the only one who thought that. Auntie, chill. You're not the only one who thought she had a great skin tone. You ain't the only one. Yeah, somebody else had the same idea. And she went all in. Now they trying to sit up here and, well, Michael, you should consider her. What the hell? And then last but not least is damn me, la la Anthony. Folks. All I can say is every time we turn around, la la Anthony is taking things to a brand new level of cringe. That is Lala Anthony at a basketball court with her son. Not her new boyfriend, not officially, with her son. And there's video. I just took that as a still from the video, but by the way, there's Lala Anthony on a basketball court with her son. No, she ain't letting it go. No, she ain't backing down. Okay. Oh, and this is what they throw 
at Michael B. Jordan. Not only is she aged out, but this is what they throw at Michael. And as black men, this is an insult. To sit up here and say that this is what he should consider dating. That this is what he, the most eligible bachelor needs to choose from. A bunch of chicks who had husbands. All three of them had husbands. All three of them broke their marriages. So she doesn't go and find somebody who's like Michael, never been married, never had kids, young. She does, the writer doesn't do that. She goes to go find three retreads to see if we can repeat the folly that is Ciara and Russell Wilson. That's what she goes to do. She does that. You don't see them do this kind of garbage with a Zac Efron or with a Leo DiCaprio. You don't see them go and grab three single moms and then go throw them in their faces. You don't see that. You didn't see them do that with Robert Pattinson. They don't do that. They don't grab the most eligible bachelors from these other communities and then media outlets sit up here and say, you know what you really need is a divorced single mom to sit up here on your, I'm sorry, an over 40 year old divorced single mom need to be sitting on your resources. They don't say that. They don't talk that kind of garbage to them. No, you ain't never seen them talk like this to them. Not one, not two, not but three And this is the only thing that she could suggest? Not somebody like him. Somebody completely outside of his experience. Women who have screwed up their chances. Women who had their opportunities, screwed up their chances, have demonstrated they are unfit for a relationship. And this is what we have tossed in our faces As black men, you can be the most eligible black man in America, the most accomplished, the one who should have all the options, and they are still going to come to you and tell you that you need to grab what was sitting out there in the bottom of the damn discount bin. What? That's what they do with us. You can never be successful enough, never be accomplished enough, never be young enough to have somebody who ain't run through, run by, run over with them telling you that that's what you need. Folks, I didn't say for the layup. If they just said for the layup, that would be different. La la, get your old ass over here. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, well, you need to have them for a long-term relationship. That's what they're saying. That Michael needs to be considering one of these three for wife material. And here's the kicker. If Michael doesn't do it, then they're going to accuse him of, well, that's the problem. You men ain't serious. You black men ain't serious. How the hell can you be serious about Crazy Eyes Maori? How the hell can you be serious about her? That's what they bring to us. They bring the damn leftovers and the cast offs to us. Work your ass off. Not so you can have the pick of the litter. Not so you can have the choice cuts. But so you can have the damn leftovers. And then you'll write articles trying to bash us and bully us and tell us this would you shouldn't you be thinking over here? They didn't even suggest that he gets someone like where he was. That tells you everything you need to know about the writer. These females start edging towards oblivion. Sorry, middle age. They've been getting bounced off that wall like a tennis ball. And so they write articles 
meant to propagandize and manipulate black men into choosing from their least options. Lala had a husband. She was cheating with that man. He was with a chick and she beat the other chicks out by saying, okay, I'm gonna lay up with him till I got him. Then she got him. And then she like, okay, you need to change who you are, Carmelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you by laying up with you with other women when other women were in the picture, but you need to stop now. Now that you're with me, you got to quit doing that. And then he didn't quit doing it. He remained the man you married. Then she said, I want a divorce. Well, why? Because you're staying the man that I married. The man that I was chasing, you're staying him. So I'm going to cry foul. I'm going to cry foul now. Tia Maori had a straight laced husband. And do y'all remember what they were saying about him when she filed for divorce? All these women out there who claim they want a good man, claim they want a straight fella, claim they want a God-fearing man, claim they just want a man who loves them for them. Remember what they all said. Oh no, ladies around the world, I got to read Jamail. Ladies around the world, I got to read Jamail tonight. Y'all remember what you all said? You all said it's okay that she divorces a perfectly good man because, well, he doesn't make as much money as she does. Remember? It's perfectly fine. This guy checked all the boxes. He's not one of them playboys. He's not non-committal. He takes care of his kids. He doesn't smoke dope. He's not getting into trouble. And they still said it was okay for her to divorce him. The women did not rise up and summarily condemn her. They supported her and said, well, well, he doesn't make as much money as she does. She don't make as much money. So, oh, well, oh, well. She makes more money than him, so it's okay that she divorces him because he's not on her level. She, him, It's okay. Now, that's what all these so-called good women around the world said. Let's quit the bull jive. That's what they said. So the next time that you try to question me when I tell you there ain't no good girls out there, remember all the good girls stood up in unison and said that it was okay for Tia Maori to divorce her husband because what crime did he commit? Well, he don't make as much money as she does and that's okay for her to divorce him for that. She can divorce him for that. And we will back her and support her. That's what they did to Corey Hardrick. And now you got some jackass writer trying to tell Michael B. Jordan he needs to line up for that. In other words, what they're trying to do is engineer a situation and a culture where you can just be a female, you can be as raggedy as you want to be, and we're going to try to pressure the men into circling back around and picking up not those who haven't made their fatal mistakes, but those who've already trashed themselves. You men need to circle back around and pick from one of them. So in other words, basically what they're saying is every hoe gets a husband. What? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. What they're basically telling you is every hoe gets a husband and that that's what the men need to work their asses off to achieve that your job is to get into an advantageous position so you can make a permanent commitment to a damn problem and the females don't have to change anything they can commit grievous inexcusable errors and there should be somebody who is desirable who gonna circle back around and show them see 
you gonna win no matter what you do. You can mess up the world. You can screw up your kids. You can blow up your family. You can destroy the neighborhood. You can mess up the community. You can get on Instagram with your psychoses and a straight laced man who's got status and desirable needs to come back around after you've created all that wreckage and show that you can still be rewarded. She's not holding them accountable for any of their behavior. Not at all. She wants Michael to sacrifice his options for females who don't qualify for any. So he needs to sacrifice his options for them. Yeah, the Ciara prayer. This is how crazy this is. And this is meant to put pressure on Michael B. Jordan and all the rest of us. That's why I want you to understand. This is meant to put pressure on Michael B. Jordan and all the rest of us. Because this article is not simply aimed at him. It's aimed at all the rest of us. That's the issue. It's aimed at all of us to tell us what we need to do differently. I want to show you the rest of the article here. It's mercifully not very long, but it says, while we could get caught up playing the black Patty Stanger all day, the Fruitvale Station actor did tell host Shetty the ideal qualities he's looking for in a partner. Jordan says he'd want someone who could, quote, understand all of me and all that comes with me. Did y'all get that nigga didn't say nothing? Boy, he's playing the female game to a T. He didn't say nothing. That sentence doesn't say anything at all. Understand all of me and all that comes with me. He ain't said nothing. That could mean anything. And if a statement can mean anything, then it means nothing. It means nothing. Jordan says he wants someone who can understand all of me and all that comes with me, as well as someone who understands, quote, that balance between wanting to be available and there for that person while I'm juggling everything else. Well, no wonder, no wonder the writer of this rancid, look it up. No wonder the writer of this reprehensible article is suggesting a trio of single moms to him. Damn! Did you all get that? Why, isn't that what your single moms always tell you? Isn't this what your career women are always telling you? Well, I just need to see you when I got time. Well, you know, I can't really be available like that. I can see you when I got time. So the writer of this article processed Michael B. Jordan making that statement with, oh, well, yeah, you need somebody who doesn't have a lot of time. You need somebody who doesn't have a lot of time to give you. Well, I won't choose a young career woman. Why don't we just give you three single moms? She didn't suggest to him a young female who isn't pursuing the career route and is able to be available to him. No, she suggests three aged out females. Well, hey, they ain't got time for you neither, Michael. They're older, they've had their kids, and, and they ain't got time for you neither. That's what the writer of this article took away from that statement. You, that Michael needs somebody who ain't got time for him.
Quote, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Deal with it, nigga. He said, I want to bring you all to this point, which really destroys any reason to write this article. Michael then says, I'm not looking. But it would take a very special person to understand and grow with me. We'll see what's up. As I told you from the very beginning, Michael is enjoying the free life. Laurie Harvey is trying to find somebody to crack them eggs before they spoil. Michael is like, hey, heifer, I got another two decades of runway in front of me. You the one about to age out. I'm all the way good over here. Options is wide open. And he intends to keep those options wide open. Yes, as he enters his 40s. Because as I told all these young men here before, and there were some idiotic jackasses and nigga you messed off your opportunities don't get mad at me because i'm simply telling the truth and bringing the light of day fellas if you wait until your late 30s at the earliest but preferably by your 40s and if you're making over six figures you will see women and marriage from a completely different lens and you will be making the best choices because you let yourself wait long enough to see the worst that they are capable of doing. You take it seriously, but you're not bound and shackled to anybody else. So you will finally be in a position to make these decisions when you are in a position of strength, but more importantly, a position of total maturity. And as men get older and more financially stable, what they find out is that I ain't in no hurry. I don't have to rush anything. I'm good. The females got to rush. I ain't got to rush nothing. Y'all got to convince me that you're my best option. I ain't got to rush a damn thing. Folks, he's good. 37, he's good. He's on top of the world. He's good. He can go straight to 45 and still be good. Shout out Idris Elba. Ain't that right, ladies? He will still be good. And as men... Those are the rules. If a man just keep the swag right and the bag right, you're good. You will always have options. If you don't go off and do something stupid that permanently shackles you to somebody. Michael is a clean slate. He has preserved being a clean slate. He's not letting these, the fact that the women don't have those options pressure him to something else. So if for those of you who were doubting me at the beginning, he confirmed what I said Hey, I'm not looking. So that's why the writer of the article is incensed. The writer of the article is furious. They tell themselves that he should be considering them when in reality, they are not viable options. Now take a look at this next sentence here. In the meantime, though, it appears Jordan has set his sights has his sights set on living life and experiencing the fruits of his labor after being zoned in for many years of his life. There's also a part of me that really hasn't lived yet. I haven't traveled for fun. I got to start living. But isn't this what the women say? Uh, I need to go find myself. I need to go enjoy myself. I need to see what's out there. I need to explore. I need to explore my, I need to live some. It's about me. Isn't that what the women say? I know you ain't mad at Michael because isn't that what the women say? Don't the women say that? I want to go on some trips and go live life and have some fun. Ain't that what the females say? Okay, well, I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? It's just you support Michael, don't you? Michael is saying, hey, I ain't really lived life yet. Isn't that what the women say in their 20s? 
to all my fellas out there in their 20s, isn't that with the women? I'm not trying to get serious. I'm not trying to settle down. I'm not trying to be boxed in. I'm not trying to be shackled to nothing. I want to have fun. I want to live my life. I want to do me. Well, Michael is doing him. And there's a whole bunch of other females lined up. Saying, hey, let me help you do you. Then she says, well, lucky for him, summer is just around the corner and there's no better time to be outside than that. Did you get that? This old salty ass bitter heifer who wrote this thing, there's no better time to be outside than that. So as you know, part of the new slang vocabulary outside is in them streets. No, it's, it's the females who've been outside. The females have been all the way outside. They damn me homeless. The females have been all the way outside. And yet when a man simply says the same thing, all of a sudden he outside. Well, that's okay, Michael. There's no better time to be outside than the summer. Maybe a break and some time in the sun gallivanting in the streets what? will do him some good. Here's to your impending hot boy summer, Michael. Boy, don't hurt him. Oh, I, heard, I hope you hurt all of them. I hope you turn the MC hammer. Hurt them all, Michael. Do you all see how bitter she is? Do you see how bitter this is? Boy, I mean, she couldn't contain herself just in case some jackass thought that I was exaggerating or that she didn't have an attitude about this or that she wasn't writing with a grudge. There's no better time to be outside. Maybe take a break. Gallivanting in these streets. Now, when it was Tia Maori, was, did she accuse Tia Maori of gallivanting in these streets? Ciara gallivanting in these streets. Jody Smith gallivanting in these streets. Lala Anthony gallivanting in these streets. So as men, you're not okay unless you're controlled. They can do everything bad and wrong to you. You're not a quote good man unless you accept abuse. And if they decide to drop you or leave you, you're not a good man unless you accept, well, it's my fault that she's doing all this wrong. This is not dating. This is not dating. This is not dating. This is power dynamics. I'm discussing power dynamics, not dating. For the slow bus kids who don't figure it out, this is not about dating. This is about power dynamics. This is about policing black men's options. So the women can get up here and fight it up and slut it up and whatever. And she's supposed to sleep with as many damn people as she wants to. You want to talk about somebody in the streets? Michael B. Jordan's ex was in the streets. Auntie, chill. Lori Harvey is in them streets. Did the root ever accuse her of what she doing? Laurie Harvey is in the streets. P. Diddy, future, P. Diddy's son. I'll be damned. You can't rattle off a list like that about Michael B. Jordan, but you damn sure can about Laurie Harvey. They never, did they accuse her of being outside and in these streets? So all of a sudden they're concerned about sexual chastity but not of the single moms, they're not. The writer isn't telling the single moms you outside and in these streets. She's telling the single childless black male that he's wrong and he outside and in these streets. But she's not policing the damn women. She doesn't want to police her fellow ovarians. They want to, everybody wants to put a damn shackle and a damn 
bridle on black men. Everyone wants to tell us what we're supposed to do, where we're supposed to go, how we supposed to do it. Meanwhile, if you a female out here, you can get your ass run smooth, slap the hell over. You can get drugged through the damn alley by future. And however many others, bow wow, meow meow, and anybody else you want to lay up with, and you are entitled to a straight-laced black man who ain't nothing like the degenerate bums that you really got a sweet tooth for. You're you gotta you're entitled to one of them to come circle back around and see if they can scoop up somebody's damn spoiled leftovers that's what the men are supposed to do so the women can be footloose and crazy as hell but the men need to keep it straight now the men need to y'all men gotta keep it right now so the men the women can be irresponsible reckless whatever they want to do the men need to keep it straight so we need enough bad boys so the females can get their sexual thrills, but we also need enough buck, buck, broken beta simps to come and sweep up the leftovers and make a lifetime commitment. Oh yeah, and bring hell a ton of resources so that you can have a female who'll spend a couple of hours a week with you and give you excuses. Well, I got a job, I got kids, I got ambitions, I got stuff I'm doing, but you sit over there in the corner like a damn hat rack. And wait for me to show up later. Oh yeah, and you need to be completely faithful to me too. And oh yeah, if I decide to leave you for any reason, well, that's legit too. These folk are out of their damn minds. These people are out of their damn minds. Policing black men's options, policing black men's sexuality, policing what black men do. Michael B. Jordan is giving you absolutely no reason for alarm. He's played the game properly. And yet they're still telling him that's not good enough because we are afraid that you know your worth, Michael. And if you stand here as a shining example of a black man who's accomplished and knows his worth, you will give ideas to the rest of these young males out here that they ain't got to play the games and that you can still, you can have a Laurie Harvey chip that hef off and go get you something better or better yet. Just stay a free agent and do what you are doing out here. No, not that free agent, a real one. But in any case, that's one. That's one. But it's not the only one. It's not the only one. No, it's not the only one. Now, what I'm about to say here, I want you to understand, I was the only person who was giving these warnings. I've been giving these warnings now for years. I've been warning folks for years. You're playing dangerous games in this regard, and you're doing good when the dominant society is either unaware of your existence or is overlooking it. You'll be in bad shape when the dominant society acknowledges your existence because it will not turn out well for you. This is from the Young Turks on their YouTube page. And you can see the title of the article here. Passport bros are fed up with American women. Now the Young Turks have 5.8 million subscribers on YouTube. Millions. They would like to talk to you about the passport bros. And I wanna show you who they show as an example of the passport bros. Hey, there's a lot of fun things to do out here in Thailand besides just looking for a wife. 
people here are fun and friendly. They have a beautiful culture, amazing food. You can live like a king for like $2,000 a month. I'm traveling the world right now. I'm a single guy and dating, so I have an experience, and it's absolutely the truth that it's better. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want me to say. It's the inconvenient truth you guys don't want to hear. Hey, we're out here having fun, living our best lives, and if you think you're going to stop us with some middle school, this is about, oh, you're a loser. You got another thing coming. You can see on her face, oh boy. But there's a different thing. There's a different thing I want to point out here. Something different. Now, I could play the whole interview here. I'm not. What they do here on the Young Turks, they 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 have a clip that they play from, of all damn people, Ben Shapiro, alt-right white supremacist arch fiend, Ben Shapiro. And Ben Shapiro... What the hell does Ben Shapiro know about women, period? Why would any man take female advice from Ben Shapiro of all people? Now, I don't give a damn if you're black, white, or otherwise. What, what, what the hell are his credentials? What has he shown you that shows you that you want to live? Folks are just breaking off into real crazy, weird lanes, you know? They're breaking off into weird, crazy, weird lanes. They really, really are. Only woman Ben needs to be worried about right now is Candace Owens. We'll come back to that some other time. But listen to them. They, they Now, they're talking about the passport bros, but then the Young Turks go and start playing a clip from Ben Shapiro. United States. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, are traveling the world in search of a partner, of a wife, of someone to share their lives with, John. Let's watch more. Oh, yeah. Passport bros? What is a passport? Okay, passport bros are men that are so fed up with Western women because we're all apparently so woke and so terrible and Western women don't want to be wives that they are now going to other countries to find wives. That's like which countries? Southeast Asia, the Philippines, the Dominican Republic. So it's like or... the opposite of the mail order bride. Yes, so like, exactly. Okay, so they're, yes. instead of ordering out, instead of using stamps.com. Yes, <laughs> and bringing them here, right, they're, they're like, they're we want to get out. It feels more expensive, but. Okay. It is. And so a lot of these men get remote jobs. And so they go there and they live in these countries and then they meet these women. And then women in the Western world, specifically the United States, are so pissed off about it. And they're like, you're going to all these countries where these women don't even know how to speak English. They can't even read. They're so uneducated. And then the men, like, film themselves with these women and, like, show themselves on dates. And the women are so elegant and they're so well-spoken and they're so traditional. And they're like, look at these women. Yeah, passport bros. Because okay. Western women are so bad. Hmm. Did not know about that. Yeah. I That's mean, why I'm here. Mm, interesting. I mean, I, I, I did marry a, a woman. Ben, we don't care, dude. This, you, what you got ain't something that even in the white community, dude, nobody's trying to emulate you and Matt Walsh. By the way, for those of you who don't know, the red pill community has basically rejected all these. They call it traditional conservatives. They call it trad con. These guys are on the outside looking in now. They've been excommunicated. Nobody's trying to replicate Ben Shapiro's personal life. Nobody's trying to replicate Matt Walsh. They're not, these fellas ain't chasing the women you got. I'm not dissing you. I'm not trying to insult your women. I'm just saying, hey, by the way, nobody's trying to get the fellas out here. They ain't trying to move around and get what you got. They don't want what you have. They don't want it. So that's why your opinion is irrelevant because what you got when I married a woman, these fellas don't want that kind of woman. But you notice that there's something missing, folks. You notice there's something missing. Now, you got these white folk talking about the passport bros. You got these white folk talking about the passport bros. Did you notice something is missing? I'm going to skip ahead here, seven minutes in. Now, according to Urban Dictionary, the authoritative source uh, for content and information about things like passport bros. The passport bros are men who have chosen to seek out foreign women, typically from other countries for relationships. They believe that Western women have been influenced by cultural and societal pressures to behave in a certain way. Do I look like the kind of person who's pressured to behave in a certain way? Yeah, you look like you're pressured to be a feminist. So, yeah, that's exactly what you look like, ma'am. And you are. In any case, the passport bros are men. Uh, folks, ain't there a word missing in here? Did, did anybody notice a word that's missing in there? Because I noticed a word that, that seems to be missing. Ha 
Has anybody else noticed the word that's missing in there? Because there's a word missing. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the black men. So let me get this straight. These folks out here were unable to make any traction. Rolo Tomasi and the rest of them squealing in the darkness for over a decade. Y'all couldn't get this thing jumped off. It All it took was a pandemic, Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit. My personal differences to the side. And as you all know, I have always given credit where credit is due. My criticisms will still stand as written. However, I have always given credit where credit is due and I will continue to do so. The white dudes couldn't get this popping. The white dudes couldn't make a lane. The white dudes couldn't get this hot. Y'all have spent over a decade out there on all your obscure websites and couldn't get nothing popping. You couldn't get this to take off. You lack the vocabulary. You lack the ability to communicate to the streets. Rolo Tomasi was criticizing Fresh and Fit for having women on their show. He said it was like beating up on little retarded children and that it might be entertaining, but it's ultimately not any good. Now, what does Rolo Tomasi do 24-7? Now, he's the one talking to women all the time. Yeah, they're going to criticize you when they can't make hay of it and they can't make it work. But as soon as they figure out, it's like, oh, damn, this y'all is really good. So black, this is the house that black men built. Whether I agree with it or not is to the side. I am giving credit where credit is due. Passport bros, the red pill becoming international and folks dealing with the actual terms of it. The white dudes, y'all didn't do that. No disrespect, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing math. Y'all didn't do that. Y'all didn't make that happen. Y'all didn't make that happen. You all couldn't get it going. You couldn't make it work. You couldn't make it pop off. You had over a decade. And you were sitting around telling yourselves that you are closet academics. And in reality, you're just legends in your own minds. None of y'all, you can sit up here and it's great that you made these terms of vocabularies and sexual marketplace and all that, but let's understand, you, you couldn't make it mainstream, you couldn't get it to the masses, you couldn't make it in the popular consciousness, you couldn't get it into the national narrative, you couldn't get the job done. And if it was left up to you, folks would still be off on little obscure discords and little obscure uh, PHP forums that's all they'd be doing today. The same thing they were doing a decade and a half ago and a decade ago. They'd still be doing the same thing. It just took a few black men and a year of a pandemic and off it went. And now everyone is speaking about it in those terms. They made a lane for the Andrew Tates. They made a lane for the Rolo Tomasis. They made a lane. And now Ben Shapiro, now the open white supremacist is trying to jump into it. Scotty, beat me up. But, 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 I gotta say, to the passport bros, you dudes are responsible for this. Because you all were sitting up here trying to bring white men into it and to say, well, it ain't just black men, do. Yes, it was. As far as naming this passport bros, you see, as black people, oh yeah, I'm going there. As black people, we take a look at something and we say, you know what the problem is? What you, yeah, you came up with a term. You can call it international dating or whatever. Eh, you came up with a term, but that term doesn't have any, it don't have any buzz. It don't have any pop. It don't have any swag. It doesn't have any flair. So when black folk hear something, it's like, no, 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 no. We're going to show you how to market this. And they came up with a term, passport bros which is the quintessential essence of marketing. It is a short phrase 
It only has three syllables. It is easily transportable, easily packageable, easily understood. It tells you what it is in the name of it, or at least it gives you a very good idea of what it is even in its name so it doesn't challenge you for comprehension. This is marketing 101. Even if they stumbled into it by accident, this is marketing 101 and we do this all the time. This is why our slang and our phrases are utilized by the planet because they come up with these esoteric terms and then we say, no, 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 no. You got to distill that down and turn it into something that everybody can swing with and everybody, it rolls off the tongue because what, you, what you've done is academic, but the world is not a university. And deal with it, nigga. That's what the Rolo Tomasis don't understand. You keep sitting up here wanting to hawk your books. That ain't gonna work. And it doesn't work because you, you're, 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 you're old men, no disrespect, but this is true. You're old men telling yourselves that you're competing with true academics like Jordan Peterson. Yes, Jordan Peterson has some alt-right tendencies, but we ain't gonna debate that right now, but you already know where I come down, Jordan Peterson. Uh, but Jordan Peterson, for his ills, and there are many, he is a true academic. You fellas ain't nowhere near his league. Nowhere near it. But you wish you had those kind of credentials, but you're not. So you guys are all fighting to see who can be king of the academy, and in the process, you totally surrendered the ability to communicate to the world. The world is not a psych 101 classroom. The world is not a doctoral thesis. And you guys don't know how to communicate to them. Furthermore, you don't want to communicate to them because you imagine yourselves as these highfalutin academics and you're not. It'd be different if you were academics. That'd be different. But you're not academics. This is why you don't understand how it works and why it works. You don't get it. The black men did get it. They found a way to make it swaggy. Whether I agree with it or not, hey, they found a way to put some swag on it. And now take a look at what they're doing. They're telling you, we're going to go and hand this off to white men. The white men we're going to take what you've done here and discuss it, but we're going to discuss it in terms of white people. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem because I'm telling you what they're doing right now. What you are witnessing is they are going to legitimize being a passport bro. Ah, ah, ah. But only for white men. Only for white men. Damn. The Young Turks are talking about this. Ben Shapiro. So we're talking about deep in white society. They're discussing passport bros, but they're only discussing behaviors and really not that much of it. Why are they doing that? Because they're about to legitimize it, but only for white men. This is going to be their attempt to legitimize white men pursuing less than white women. Now, you notice what he said. He's in Thailand. As you all know, Caucasian society has historically categorized Asian people as a white adjacent group. Your young white males online right now, a bunch of them, hey, they, they trying to get their Asian swag on. They trying to swing it. That's, that's, that's the groove. That's the way for them is to go to Asia. So you've seen a bunch of black men who've been talking about going to Asia now for over a decade. Now the white males, the young white males are putting the white women in America on notice that we are willing to swap you out. Now, why is it they're not worried about that? Okay, we're going to get deep tonight with it here. By the way, we're going to get deep tonight with it. I got to go there though. I got to go there. Got to do it. 
You can't do that with black women because of white men's fear of genetic annihilation. Their genes, when they have a black baby, with when they have a baby with a black woman, well, yeah, can't really can't really fool yourself about that one. But if they have children with an Asian woman, their genes are less dominant. So the Asian kids come out like, uh, what's his name? Ezra Miller, Keanu Reeves. White men can live with that. I want y'all to understand now. I'm opening some eyes for you all. The, that fear of genetic annihilation is lessened tremendously when it's an Asian because the genes are not as dominant. So the kids, generally speaking, the kids don't come out looking as Asian as before. They come out looking eh, more on the white side, at least enough to satisfy them. Please remember Keanu Reeves being part Asian was not a conversation back during the Bill and Ted's excellent adventure years. For those of us who are old enough to remember Keanu back during Bill and Ted's excellent adventure and speed, remember, nobody was talking about him being part Asian. They talked about his name and something like being Hawaiian and it means the wind rolling over the mountains or something like that when he did an interview, but they weren't harping on him being Asian part Asian that doesn't start to happen until after not even the matrix movies. They weren't talking about that during the matrix movies. It's only been since the popular rise of the alt right on YouTube and on the internet that all of a sudden they're discussing his Asianness. Ah, uh, 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 but they're not discussing it as a negative. It's not being discussed as a negative. Ezra Miller's Asianness has not been discussed as a negative. Yeah, he's got it, but they don't discuss it as a negative. That's the difference. They are not afraid of these men's genes. And furthermore, what these, what they've shown is that the next generation is going to look for the, a white person to, to, uh, have children with. So in other words, within literally two generations, that Asian union, that white Asian union is going to be a white, white union within two generations. Within two generations. That's a big difference. They're not afraid of genetic annihilation in that manner. So they're just going to go ahead and take you for the damn ride. They're going to take you for the damn ride. What they're going to do is discuss passport broing for white men. They're going to discuss them as white men. But they're going to tell you, no, not you. The white man is going to be sexual options, but not for you. Not for you. Not for you. For the black men, you're going to be sex tourists. For the black men, you are going to be sex tourists. You're going to be, oh, you're chasing prostitutes. You're chasing hookers. That's, that's going to be you. That's going to be your lane. When they discuss you, it's not going to be that you're unhappy with quote, Western women. It's not going to be that when they discuss you, it's going to be, oh, you guys are the perverts. So the white men will be dating and the black men will be sex tourists. What? Just thought I would point it out to you. Just 
just thought I would point it out to you. Just mark my words. I can put it out there for you, but mark my words. The fellas are going to keep jumping around. Understand, they're not going to have white men with the nation of Brazil saying that you're outlawed from their country. Damn. Oh, did you notice that? No, then they're not. You're not going to have white men being told you you're disrespecting our women in Brazil and in Colombia and you got to leave the country. Now they're going to tell the black men that, oh, you, you disrespected our women by wanting to put your grubby hands on them. But you're not going to see the white men causing an international incident. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see that at all. Now you should know what that means when they set that up. Once again, this is policing black men's options. I know this is going to be hella shocking and surprising for a lot of you. But I got to keep it impartial. And by the way, if you'll remember, I have been completely consistent. When Austin Holloman was on my program and then got himself in an international incident. When Austin did that, you'll all remember, I, I didn't defend Passport Broin, but I did say, by the way, if the white men are able to do it and nobody's trying to chase them out the damn nation that they're in, don't sit up here and say, well, the black men get to be held to a different standard. If the white men get to run through all the Colombian chicks and that's legit, then why is it not legit for the black men to do the same damn thing? Now, remember, I said that at the height of the Austin Holloman controversy. You all can go back and check it from last year. I said it at the height of that controversy. I said it in the middle of it. Yeah, I pointed out where he's game goofy, but I also stated, by the way, he shouldn't be, him and the rest of them should not be held to a different standard. Now, we know how the real world works, but in principle, no, if the white, if it's not slutting out your daughters when the white men are all over the place, even with underage girls, then uh, yeah, it, it ain't slutting out when the black men do it. If it's legit for the white dudes, it's legit for the black men, isn't it? And I'm just letting you know right now. Oh, no, no, no. They're letting you know we're going to we're if they're here worried about taking control of the terms. It's because they are getting ready to throw you a swerve. So if they're trying to control the terms that you made, just like you hear them talking about woke they're if they're here to hijack the term passport bros, it's because they're about to weaponize it against you. If you have no less than Ben Shapiro and the Young Turks here to attempt to hijack that term and they didn't mention you one time while they used it, that means it's getting ready to get weaponized. And you've got major outlets here on the internet where the real vernacular and slang of America is circulated. Now they're all getting on the same page. Oh, they getting ready to weaponize this. They found a new term they want to weaponize. But remember for white folks, it's just quirky for black people, whatever it is. Oh, we need laws against this. See for the white men it's just quirky and we'll debate it and discuss it. Oh, can't you do something different? But for black folks is for the black men is going to be no, 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 no. For you, for you black passport bros. Oh, we need laws about you. For the white men, we need discussion and debate. But for you, we need to make a new law. Hey, we're, folks, I'm telling you right now, this will be, they are gearing up for some form of an international man act. 
For those of you who know about the Mann Act and miscegenation laws, yeah, we're getting ready to gear up for a 21st century international Mann Act. That's what it's going to be. I'm just trying to give you the heads up. I understand these people. I've analyzed it here so you don't have to. So for all the passport bros out there, I'm doing you a solid right now. I'm letting you know, A, they're getting ready to do, they're, they're getting ready to take legal action in this regard. Well, Jason, what do you mean? What they're going to be doing is saying, well, we want to we wanna criminalize what you're doing over there. But we want to get just the black men, not the white ones. So what they're going to do is attack, well, what were your motives for going over there? That's what they're going to say next is, what were your motives for going over there? And then they're going to criminalize that. Oh, you were going over for illicit purposes. Well, the prostitute wasn't in America. She was in Thailand or Bangkok. So we, even though it wasn't a crime committed over there, we're going to prosecute you for your intention. So you intended to go commit a crime. So we're going to prosecute you for that. And then that is going to morph into conspiracy so that they can arrest you before you even leave. All they got to do is prove that you wanted to go over there for that. And now we can prosecute you for conspiracy to commit illicit acts internationally. What about all these white dudes? Oh, they're just dating. But you... Mark my words, man. Mark my words. Mark my words. I'm just trying to warn you. You don't have to listen. Austin didn't either. He thought he was going to run from South America to Asia and be all right. And it's like, by the way, I've kept more of an eye on this than them. They ain't paying attention. They want to sit up here and argue with the host of the program about whether or not they should have the option of choosing women outside the United States. They're not listening to the people who are doing the talking. The people who are doing the talking have a history and a track record of targeting us. So if all of a sudden, straight out of nowhere, they're discussing the passport bros, but they're being very careful to exclude black men from it, then that means they got plans for this and they don't want the black men using them. Well, they, they, they didn't want to racialize it, Jason. That's the problem. You ain't smart enough. They didn't want to racialize it. Go ahead and believe that if you want to. Ben Shapiro racializes everything. And if he found this and he knows it's black men and yet he's talking about it, get ready. Here we come. Here it goes. They got you in the crosshairs. They know exactly what they're going to do with you. They didn't talk about this because they're trying to figure out what to do. They already know what they're going to do with this. They're just proceeding with the plan now. Now they're just proceeding with the plan. They already know what they're going to do. They already know what it's going to be. Now they're just coordinating and starting the national conversation and, of course, giving themselves control of the national conversation. See, if you're going to talk about the passport bros, why didn't they come and talk to some of them? If you're going to talk about the passport bros, why didn't they talk to some of them? But you see, they would have to find somebody black to talk to. They wouldn't be able to just talk to any old body. They have to find somebody who qualifies. They have to find somebody with credentials. They have to find somebody that the internet recognizes as being one of the legit passport bros carrying the banner. And that's not white men. The white fellas done jumped on later. So if they're trying this hard to wrestle away this title from you so that white men can carry it, you know they damn sure ain't going to prosecute white men. You know damn well they're not going to prosecute white men. 
So if they're trying to wrestle this term away from you, eh, they got a plan for it. They already know what they're going to do. They already know. And this is about policing black men, confining you and imprisoning you and even mentally imprisoning your options so that you get up and tell yourself that this is the best you can do. And this is all you should want to have. Now, the white men will be told you have the run of the planet, but the black men will be told, well, go see if you can find a retread to go make a wife out of. No, no, no. You shouldn't use them for recreational sex like everybody else did. You need to make a commitment. But they're going to tell the white men that they can just flake and skate all over the place. They can date and skate worldwide. That's what they're going to tell them. You keep doing what you do in international playboy, but these black men need to stay right where they are and choose from right where they at. And we're going to tell them that they need to choose from the worst, most undesirable options. And furthermore, they should work their ass off for it. They should work for decades. And that's what they need to be doing. However, you might disagree. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. And the number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. This is the one. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the video here, uh, put the link to Zoom in the chat room. So if you are so inclined, you can go ahead and give us a call. If you're not, that's okay too. If you are not, that is quite all right too. But you will have the opportunity to call in today if you want to. So you can avail yourselves. If you'd like. Have a little bit of housekeeping to do here tonight as well. So let me go ahead and take care of that real quick for you here also. Uh, I'm going to be getting some more mods. There have been some changes where my mods are concerned here. So I'm actually going to be getting some more mods. I For everybody who has sent an email previously, the last time I was doing it, um, I got all female mods right now. I'm gonna I wanna get some male moderators. I wanna get some male moderators, because right now all I got is all female moderators. I wanna get some male moderators. So remember it needs to be somebody I recognize, somebody who participates in the chat, somebody who's here on a regular basis and participates. So well Jason, I listen every week, but I don't really be I don't really be saying nothing, but I'm with you there. Okay, well I'm I'm not gonna take no chances on that. So if you're not somebody who regularly participates in the chat and shows up every week, then uh, thanks for your consideration, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can check into it. But um, if you're a name we recognize, you're in the chat, you participate every week. So I think I want to get two guys. I think I want to get two males this time. I, I didn't gave it to the females before. I had some males. We had to uh, let them uh, pursue future endeavors. Thank you, WWE. But uh, I want to get some a couple of guys on here. Going to have to put you through mod school. But uh, definitely, if you want to do that, you can email me at handlethebusiness at yahoo.com. You can email me at handlethebusiness at yahoo.com. Put the subject line, uh, moderator. Just put moderator in the subject line and... Just give me your name and a good phone number you can be called at. So just give me your name and a good phone number you can be called at. And whatever your name is in the chat room. And if if all the paperwork checks out, if all the paperwork checks out, then we'll go ahead and handle that. If all the paperwork checks out. So that can be an option for you here. 
I'm looking to get a couple of them. I might get three. To be totally honest, I might get three. I might. Let's go ahead and pop that Zoom up in the chat room here as well. Let me go ahead and do that. Also here, uh, to clarify one thing here, um, I did get a message here. Ezra Miller um, is mixed. Ezra has played Asians in, in, in cinema. I'm pretty certain I've seen him do that. I'm pretty certain I've seen him play Asians. So certainly they don't have any problem accepting that boundary right there. They don't have any problem accepting that. So keep that in mind. Because I want to say that Ezra has actually, uh, I want to say that Ezra has actually claimed that. I have to do a deeper dive into that because I want to say that Ezra has actually claimed that. I don't want to get into an Ezra Miller discussion here, but you know how I'm about those kind of things. I want to actually do a deeper dive into that because I want to say that Ezra has actually claimed that. I want to say he actually has. Um, I may come back to this in the future. It depends but if I think it's that important. Uh, just, But just to clarify about Ezra. Um, let me go ahead and check here. Oh, yeah. Also, I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here. <laughs> Big shout out here to uh, my man, Maurice. Thank you very much for your support here. Evan. Thank you as always here, my man, Young Investor, and everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Venmo. We're still working on uh, the Super Chat and stuff. We've been going back and forth here with YouTube. They've been stonewalling me, so I'm going to have to try something different here. Uh, but definitely, for those of you who have that, that's good. And for those of you who want to, like I say, with Cash App, uh, definitely that one's been sabotaged, but it's cool. We're going to play past that. Don't let the fact that we're not using, that we don't have Cash App available here prevent you from contributing. We got other options there, so don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you there at all. Phone lines here are blowing up. Fellas want to discuss this. And whenever I talk about Passport Bros, the fellas always jump in there. We're going to go ahead and uh, take that as well. But let me go ahead and uh, get that. Okay, let me go ahead and get them and unmute you all. All right, let me get caller from area code 323. You're on live with the business. Oh, wait a minute. Before I get to that there, also, I think you all noticed here, I put up a poll earlier this week. And um, I was telling you all, you know, I wanted to take the business down back down to just one day a week. I think as you all can tell, I think I've settled on Friday as being the day that we do the business broadcast now. It's been a blast doing it for two days out of the week. It's also been very stressful. You know, there's a lot to cover and things, but usually there's been something available. Uh, most YouTubers, when they have, you know, a successful run, if they've got days that, you know, they're able to broadcast on and people are responsive and things, generally what they'll do is they'll try to stretch it as far as they can. And they'll try to just keep going on those days as long as it's successful. Well, I'm one of the few who doesn't do that because I don't have to. So for any other YouTuber, they would just want to keep their days where they are and this, that, and the other. But for me, I, I can move a little bit different. I know it's going to bum some of you out. You get ready for your Mondays and whatnot hearing me. I understand that. I got a documentary to finish. I got actually... In reality, I actually have two things I'm working on right now. I, I can't go into detail about the other, but I got two things I'm working on right now. And the documentary alone is taking up a ton of time. So once it's over, I don't know. I don't know if I'll go back to two days a week. I don't know. But for right now, this is how we rocking it. So catch me here on Fridays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And catch us on Patreon every weekend at 12 noon Central Time. And no matter what happens, I want to thank all of you here for joining me, no matter what the circumstances. All right. Housekeeping is done. Let me go ahead and get to the telephone lines. Caller from Eric 323. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, good evening, big brother Jason. This is Brother Elijah Carl. We in Maryland. Ah! All right, Brother Elijah's called up here. Brother, 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 how you make it down? Brother, brother, brother. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, you know, why, Jason, why'd you do the screen? Because he wants me to believe he's back in Wheaton, Maryland. So I'm like, okay. It's, oh, 
<laughs> he wants me to believe. It. He's usually calling me from an airport. He's usually calling me from an airport. <laughs> Talk about the passport, bro. No, nigga, no. You, he, he's there live on the scene. So if there is a passport, bro, in our midst, it's probably Elijah. All right, brother, what's on your mind? No, no. No, brother, I'll, the next time travel will be made, brother. But, but um, brother, two things um, that you hit home. Um, with our brother um, Michael B. Jordan, I, I asked this question, like, hey, the brother is, you know, not coming from no other place, if you know what I'm saying. He's, I'm saying it is from an aspiring um, point of view. The brother's fit, looks great, good career, bright future. It keeps getting brighter and brighter. And I asked this question, why in this day and time the brother is, um, of all people, he can't find a loved one, brother? It's not that he can't find, brother. He He's swimming in women. Michael B. Jordan is yes, swimming sir. in women. Look, the bottom line is this idea that we as men got to sit up here and get married in our 20s. Brother, that's dead. Stick a fork and it's dead and it's done. You know why? Because lie. it's a lie. We don't have to move yes, like sir. that. So everybody's trying to apply the pressure to us to tell us that y'all need to step up. And come grab one of these retreads who screwed off her chances when she was young and nubile and hot as hell and come get some whacked out psycho and come drop your resources off. So everybody is concentrating their energies and their efforts toward knuckling us under. Michael B. Jordan ain't got to do a damn thing. He's doing good like he is. Play the field. If he enjoys one female, cool, kick it with her. If he enjoys three females, cool, kick it with him. But this idea that everybody needs to control what we do so you could be a straight-laced black man. You ain't making a bunch of bastard kids. Shout out, future. You're not sitting up here passing around STDs. Usher, where you at? You're not sitting up here with a bunch of garbage going on, and they still trying to tell you, oh, you need to be a monk. That's what they, so the most eligible black men need to be monks. Now, the white men can globe trot, damn it. But the black men, oh, that out-of-control sexuality you got there. Now the females can hoe it up and slut it up as much as they want to, to the point that they got OnlyFans as a major website. But the black men gotta watch what they do. No, if yes, Michael sir. is cool where he at, if he's cool with the level of interaction he has with females, and more importantly, here's what drives them nuts. Here's what drives them insane with it. Michael B. Jordan is controlling where he is. What? Now, that's what drives him nuts. Michael B. Jordan got complete control. You see, ladies, I got to read the mail. I got to read the mail. Oh, are we getting into it today? Not going to do the whole thing. Not going to do the whole <laughs> thing of the dark arts. We ain't going to get off into the dark arts completely here, but... Michael B. Jordan, yes, bro, they're used to women having this kind of leverage and power. Women will be quick to tell you, if my man ain't doing what I want, I just go in my DMs and give me another one. Michael's like, well, you know, I got the same power. Michael can show up at any place, any hotel, any restaurant, any DMs, any event, anywhere, and walk out with three chicks. With all three of them smiling and cheesing. As a black man, they don't want us to have that. Because the women, for the most part, ladies, I got to read the mail. Most females today have screwed off their chances in their prime. So now it's about, okay, can we control these men? And get them where we want them, which is a subservient class that serves the females, no matter how raggedy and dusty she might be. They don't want you to have the free the freedom to lay up and roll out. If the female doesn't meet your standards, like, okay, well, here's the level you, of interaction you and I can have. Oh, no, you can't do that. You need to commit to me. You need to do all this stuff. Okay, but you didn't require that nigga that got you pregnant to do it. And you didn't require the man you were married to. You didn't require yourself to act that way with him. But I got to do it. No, Michael B. Jordan is in control. And seeing a black man who is 
There, you see, what this really does uncover is a very evil thing. I'm not being hyperbolic. This is really uncovering a very evil thing. Yes, sir. This is really a nasty and evil thing that we're talking about right now. Because what they're telling you is that they only want black men who can't control their sexual urges. You can be an all right black man with them as long as you're willing to let any hop slut out there who wants to have your kids have them. As long as you submit to women sexually and just if she wants sex and she wants you to have kids and it's not in your best interest and it puts you over a barrel. Well, you just go ahead and do it anyway. Well, you're a good black male. But to the black men who are like, yeah, I don't do that. I'm, I'm in complete control. They demonize you. They demonize you for being in control. So what they're trying to condition you is to shame black men. So they tell you the black men don't control themselves enough. And when you find one who does, they come out of the woodwork jumping on him and say, oh, you need to control yourself. Well, control myself. I am. Nobody's getting pregnant. Nobody's getting STDs. Everything's Swayze. Yeah, but you're not marrying them. But you didn't marry these hoes. It required these hoes to marry nobody. You're not requiring them. You're not putting the pressure on them. Nobody's putting the pressure on Laurie Harvey. They let yes, her sir. up here and sport sex her way through life. But they're not putting the pressure on her. So as black men, what they're saying is you need to be like the NBA players and these professional sports dunces and just let any slutty broad that wants to have a kid with you sit up here and put a shackle around your neck. But for the rest of you, it, you're no good if you say, yeah, I'm not falling for that. I'm not going for that. I I, I want to have my options. And yeah, if I want to chick around, I, I'm, I'm controlling the interaction. They're trying to pressure you and shame you into saying, nope, let the females control it. And you just roll with whatever she wants. That is suicide. Yes, sir. That is suicide. I'll let you have the last word. Um. Two other questions, and um, I'll be on my land, my plane. Um, don't you think it's shocking because with this whole thing with um Hollywood, they most of the time prefer black men be homosexuals. For some apparent reason, modern times, they they um hate heterosexual black men. They push this whole they want you to be a homosexual to get more roles, i.e. Malik Yoba. I'll leave my point there because I don't even know how this brother had such a great run like this because they would have tried to, I thought they would have tried to find a way to sabotage him. And then my other point is with the passport bros, do you see the end? Um, well, let me put it for you another way. Four years ago, because this whole thing happened so fast, we was doing the George Floyd um, uprising. And then a year later, we're talking about the passport. No, I'm landing. I landed my plane. That's just my last question, brother. I don't know if Michael B. Jordan is 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 has made a has had a freak off. I don't know if he has. All I know is all I know is how he's moving in streets. So I I can't yes, speculate sir. about the rest of that stuff. Everybody in Hollywood is not gay. But just understand that just goes back to controlling our sexuality. It just yes, comes sir. right back to that again. There, is, everybody has a vested interest and an incentive in controlling our sexuality. That's what it comes down to. So that's that. That's what I think about that. About Hollywood and how they think about things. That's what it comes down to. Let's go ahead and control you. Um, as far as the passport yes, bros, like I say, I mean, this is a story that's still developing. Not really certain yet completely how it turns out, but I have a very good idea of how it's going and how it's going to end. And, you know, my job, brother, is just, uh, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm not ignoring your question. I'm just going to say there's only so much of that I can answer because we're just yes, at the beginning sir. of yes, this. Sir. Yes, sir. But what I will say is i I'm not, I'm trying not to use certain language here. It's not because I'm afraid of it. It's because this is the business and I do, I, I have a different kind of conversation here, but I'll just go ahead and say yeah, this. Yeah. And I usually don't talk like this in the business, but 
white supremacy evolves. So even if they start moving in another direction, it's going to start moving with them. So if you zig, they're going to zag. If you start moving, they're going to start moving. So no matter what they do, I'm just saying, look, to the passport bros and stuff, I'm not going to sign off on anybody chasing hookers or underage girls. I ain't going to sign off on any of that. For the rest of it, there's nothing for me to sign off on. If you want to sit up here and Olympic gold medal sex your way through Thailand, if you're not making any kids or STDs, I, I'm like I say, it's just it's not my place to really have a whole lot to interject on that. It isn't. I just want them to understand, by the way, regardless of how Jason Black feels, you're on hostile territory and you all have deluded yourselves into thinking you're in a safe place and you're not. You've been lulled into a false sense of security and now they got all of y'all so comfortable that when they get ready to tighten the noose, you'll be sitting there talking about, they'll be gathering you up every day and you'll all be sitting there with them grabbing another one and grabbing another one and grabbing another one talking about, hey, that was just him, he just wrong. They'll just sit there until they boil in the pot like the uh, frogs. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight here. We're going to go ahead and go over here on Zoom. Let me go ahead and get over here on Zoom. I got my man Prince out of Richmond. All right, brother Prince, you got my you got my sound playing. Get over here on what the hell is Prince doing in this new favorite technology? All right, there you go. Hi, right, Prince. What's on your mind? Yes, brother. I want to ask you a couple of questions. One, why do you think the passport bros are quiet? They seem to be quiet when it comes to this uh, issue. Like, you know, I'm talking about the brothers in particular. Like, they're not saying much about all. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the reason why is because, as I've always said, they're willing to die for this. Mm. They are willing to die for their interracial sexual access. They're, they're, this is what they've been working for. You've seen folks out here dying over shoes. You see people dying over baseball caps, dying over colors. These guys are willing to die for this fetish. They are willing to risk life and limb. It's everything they worked for. Hmm. So just like you've met people who are willing to fly to the moon, a rocket by definition is a dangerous proposition. Yes. Certainly how we use them today. I mean, escaping Earth's atmosphere, you're literally sitting on a giant bomb and we've had more than a couple of them blow up. And yet we've never had a lack of astronauts, high rise (laughs) construction. And I should know I used to work it, but yeah, folks regularly get killed at that. People die doing high rise construction every year. And yet, including me, I signed up for it knowing this. So this is these guys thing. This is their thing. Race car drivers. They had a dream of driving race cars. I really want to pick an aspirational example. Race car driving is recreation. It's not even something that we need, like building skyscrapers. It's a recreation. And yet these guys are willing to die for it. So that's the passport bros in a nutshell. So so maybe you can't, you know, you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, you letting it develop, but you think they letting the uh the, the, the white guys just uh co opt it? They just gonna let them do it? Are they just going to be happy just to be alone for the ride? I mean, they've been letting them do it. Mail order bride is something that folks have criticized, but never criminalized. Never. Under age. Some of these brides are 14 and 15 years old. I mean, you and I are old enough to remember in the back of the magazines, they'd had them ads for that kind of stuff there. So yeah, mail order brides have always been a thing. And it was something that was shamed and ridiculed. But it was never something where they posted up people's faces and talking about criminalizing them. Now, that they never did. And with these white men, they're not talking about doing that for the passport bros thing either. They're not talking about criminalizing them. And I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all are talking about something that black men made and you're using that term. So you're going to give black men more freedom or when you start doing that. So (laughs) that's how you know that the lemon twist is coming. That's how you know it's coming. Now, dealing with uh, Michael B. Jordan, do you think you you was right in the same mindset that I was? But do you think they're trying to bug break him in real time, right, right before us? 
usually they want to bring the guys buck broken, but they want to, you think they're trying to use him as a, an example, you know, you know, they want to break him in front of the world to say, look, this strong black man, we got him to buy down to one of these single mothers. Well, I mean, look, um, what they're witnessing is the death of Ciara's prayer, if you will. <laughs> They, they they see the writing on the wall. Russell Wilson is a dud. Wow. The whole idea was that we as men were going to be worshiping Russell Wilson. That we were going to see Ciara get with Russell Wilson and all. That's what they thought. You know, they, they really think like, like, like white society towards us. That... Oh, well, isn't this like the way white folk talk about Martin Luther King with us? Like if Martin Luther King said something, we should take that as holy scripture. And just yes. whatever Martin Luther King said. Well, I found this this uh sentence from Martin Luther King. Shouldn't you go along with this? I'm like there was a whole speech about dude. But anyway. Well, don't you like football? Well, yeah. Well, Russell Wilson. Oh hell. So that's what they thought. Don't you all like football? Well, one of your heroes in football, and what they found out is he was no hero. He wasn't one of our heroes. So you found a dud. And even if he was one of our heroes, he, he would have become a dud when he did this. So they found a lame duck. They found a dud. He was a flop. It didn't work. It didn't work. No. He Not at all. Now, my last question is, like DMX said, DMX said, what do they really want from us? They have to know that black men are not going to bow down to these, these type of demands. So what are they expecting? Are they buying time? Are they trying to shame us? Because it's going to pretty soon they're going to be saying, oh, he must be gay. You know, that's going to be the next thing. If you don't do what they say when they want you to do it, something has to be in question about your sexuality. What are they? Because are, Jason, my thing is this, and this is why I want to end with you, you know, I'm going to let you finish. With dealing with uh you know forty eight laws of, laws of power that you don't put your enemy in the corner, but it seems like with women you don't show no you don't give no leeway you know I don't so you, don't you supposed to give women out that you know just like any other oppositional force that you're dealing with yes but, yes huh? and and here's my thing in the twenty first century listen y'all I've been saying this now for a decade. I, I I can't think of another way to do this. But the men are let the women are sitting out here moving any old kind of way. They're moving like they're in 2024 and they're t everybody's trying to tell the men to move like it's 1944. And what I'm saying is, okay, if 80% of the females want to sleep with 20% of the men and have bastard kids by 10% of the bottom 10% rule change, New rule, new rule, fellas. We ain't got. We don't all have to agree on everything. We don't. We don't all have to agree on the passport bros. We don't all have to agree on side chicks. We don't all have to agree on a number of different things. But there's one thing that we as men better agree on. That nobody has a right to tell us that we got to play by a set of highly restrictive rules and the females can turn whole cities into war zones with their bastard kids by the low lives at outrageously alarming numbers. That the females can turn Atlanta into a herpes hellhole. What? Did you say it? That the females can turn New York City into a STD slum. Damn! That the women can be the nastiest, most despicable thing, but the men got to... Well, you need to save yourself so when I get finished scumming it up, you gonna be there for me. And I'm saying as men, we better, uh, we better be able to agree on that one. That there's no way in the hell you gonna tell us that the women can move all kinds of crazy, but the men only got one or two options. Well, you can get married or you can wait till I come around for you. 
You can either go marry some scum broad you don't want to be with or some chick after your money. Or, well, yeah, you want to be with me, but I'm still exploring the world and exploring my options. So you sit here and wait till I come back a hundred pounds heavier and four kids dirtier. <laughs> you just sit here and wait for me. Hell no. So fellas, we, we don't all... Oh, we don't all move the same way. Uh, I don't think any of us should be moved with anybody doing no criminal stuff. Although even there, I'm not going to let the definition of criminal move any further. Now, let me say that I am not going to condone the definition of criminal moving any further. You got women out here killing babies and deal with it, nigga, and calling it abortion. But the men got to sit up here and pay child support for a child they don't want. So the women can have an abortion and kill the baby if well, I'm not ready to be a mom. But the man, ready or not, nigga, here it comes. Okay, no, I'm not letting the definition of criminal move any further in a world where women have laws that say, go ahead and kill the kids. But the men, you got to deal with whatever she does. Well, you're not allowed to control her body, but she's allowed to control yours. And you have a Supreme Court that signs off on it. Hell no. So I'm not going to let, now the reason why I bring up saying I'm not going to let the definition of criminal migrate any further is okay. Having sex with underage people. All right, that's fine. We can all agree with that one. Having sex with prostitutes. Eh, they tend to bring down the real estate values and the quality of the neighborhood. So, and eh, then them hoes got to go. They got to go. All right, I'll sign off on that. And if you intend to go to a place where it's legal to get prostitutes, wait a minute. Hold on a second now. So you say there's a place where that's legal. Yeah. yeah. You exactly. cannot travel there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you're against prostitutes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm also against people telling me I can't go somewhere. Because if I give you that ability, well, then next thing I know, you'll come back next week with a new place I can't go for a different reason. So yeah, the more things I let you criminalize, the more control you have. Eh, I think you've got enough control already. Truth be told, I think you got too much. So yeah, I'm not gonna allow you to criminalize anything else. Certainly not as far as the men's behavior is concerned. You've criminalized your last thing. You, you're done. Until Unless you come up with something really, really great, You've criminalized your last thing. Now, slipping somebody a Molly or a Mickey or something, that's a different matter. But that, that's baby? something that is universal. But as far as the basic rules of it, no, nah, we're done with that. We're done. What's the new cutoff age for mar for young men to marry? Dr. Dr. Francis Chris Wilson say at least over 30. Nobody. What do you think? It's 35, 40 now for, these, for this group of 20 years. Okay, old. cutoff means you don't marry them. I mean, uh, uh, not cut off, but, but you know, before they should get, be able should get married. Yeah. I mean, definitely in my opinion, the starter age should be around 37. Women if you quit. are a young man who has spent 20 years from the age of 17 to the age of 37, exploring the world, dating, meeting every type of female that you can so that you can see, by the way, they really will lie, cheat, steal, look you in the face and try to screw you over. They really will do that. Now you, you had 20 years to lose your naivete. No, not even 35. I would make it 37 right before you get to 40 because 35, you don't really start making no money till you hit your thirties. And you're not, you haven't really dealt with women in a financial way to see how they handle your finances until you're in your thirties. You yes, haven't sir. had anything financially to lose. You need a number of years to get to a hundred thousand dollars and you need a number of years to see how women react to a man, man's resources so that you lose. First, you need to lose your social naivete, then your sexual, then your financial. Once you've lost those three, now I think I can start trusting you to make decisions because you're making them against your experiences, not against your ideals. Okay. If I can get you there, I think you'll be okay. Thank you very much for giving us a call here. Let me go ahead and get one more. Then we're going to jump back over to the phone lines. Uh, I see Dan and Juwan on the lines here. Let me go ahead and grab Dan right quick. Unless he's off in another room somewhere. 
Hi, Dan. He's connecting his audio here. He's hooked up to Southside Broadband. All right, Dan is down there calling us from the trenches. You can hear me now? All right, brother, what's on your mind? Oh, um, I just want to comment on the, uh, on the topic. I like the way how you break that down. That's some cold game. I kind of always was um was curious about the passport bros. It seems like the passport bros and the uh, the mentals and the red pill Conte. I, I'm I'm starting to really I'm starting to really pick up on that. It was thought about white men. You know what I'm saying? Like they have their own they have their personal issues with you know what I'm saying the women in the community. Of course, they birth race and all that other shit. You know, but yeah, man, I I one hundred I one hundred percent see that coming. What you call the man act or start hitting niggas with the Bill Cosby treatment, or maybe the R. Kelly treatment. But we talk about the Bill Cosby and the uh, Jonathan Major treatment. When it come to these other different um, when it come to sports, your outrage. I mean, your inter, your interracial uh options in these other countries and stuff like that. So and weaponized against brothers, but. Now I think that's more important to pay attention. I think that's that's very for me that's very important to pay attention to. Or any 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 nigga that pay attention to that because you know you don't want nobody you you know you don't want nobody get caught up in that trick bag. You know what well, I'm saying? you know certainly you don't. We don't need anybody else policing our behavior. They're not policing anybody oh, yeah, else's. Yeah. So my whole thing is just simple. If you uh, if it's good enough for for us, it's good enough for everybody. And if we cannot all be equally comfortable, then damn it, we can all be equally uncomfortable. But it's not going to be one set of rules for thee and another set of rules for me. And as black men, a lot of black men, understandably, with the mess that's been created by the women, ladies, you got to hold this ill. The mess they created, a lot of black men have taken it on to them to clean it up. And yeah, to say, okay, the mess that she made over there with somebody else, I got to jump up and, well, I got to step up. I ain't got to step a damn thing up. No, I don't. She's misused her sexuality. She blew her chances. She ruined her card. Just because she ruined hers doesn't mean I ruined mine. I'll let you have the last word. Oh, and uh, yeah, speaking on the policing, because if we're if we, we, if, if we going to keep it 100, man, uh, and it's like 54, 55 percent of black men in America don't have children. So if, if 54, 55 percent of us don't have kids, then you can't say that we cause then you can't necessarily say we cause some problem. Then I was reading like different articles basically saying that most black men don't start having children to after 40 or some shit like that. I don't know how. Well, you know certainly, sir, I won't say most. I don't think that number's accurate, but certainly more are waiting later. And that's particularly troublesome to the females, the female writers at the root. That's troublesome because it doesn't require all of us waiting until 40. If you have a, the females become able to have children when they're 15, 16 years old. We legally don't want them doing that until they're the age of majority. Okay. So in her case, she's got about a good 12, 13 year window to have children. If the men as a group start holding off for merely a decade during that time, which right now would be an additional four or five years. If the men as a group start doing that, you're going to have a large number of women who are going to watch their opportunities evaporate, not because they didn't have kids that the, because the women are still showing you, Oh, they don't give a damn how they have children about who it is. And no matter how raggedy and nasty he is, it's about, can you have a protector and provider who is going to elevate your lifestyle? Because now you've taken on a burden. And having that kid without the man committed to you is going to drastically reduce your quality of life. They're trying to fix that. How do you have a bunch of single moms and a middle class? You can't. So they're trying to figure out a way to coerce the men, the responsible men into taking up all the leftovers so that these women are not left without a middle class and of course, governments want that kind of thing too. So it's about controlling you in that regard because once a woman becomes a single mom, once she be, or a divorcee, single mom, divorcee, or never married, her ability to enter the middle class gets cut in half. If she does make it, 
she's going to have to do a hell of a lot of hard ass work to get there. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. We're going to jump over here to the phone lines here. Um, everybody here on Zoom, just stay where you're at for a minute. Let me get caller from area code 626. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what up, Jason and CB are the Bard. 626 LA representing, but reporting live from the streets of Tampa. I've called in a couple of times. How you doing tonight, man? All right, brother. You done went coast to coast. Yo. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. But yeah, um, I wanted to first talk about um, you know, the situation with Western women in general. Now I do have a passport. Um, I am twenty eight years of age and actually last week I was going to go and um go overseas to Anguilla. But I decided not to because I got, you know, a permanent position as a garbage man here on the streets of Tampa. Even though I'm homeless, I'm still, you know, doing what I got to do, getting this money up. So the Passport Bow movement, um, I actually first learned about it from CGA. And even he warned people, like, in the past, like, it don't go strictly for sex, like, don't go for sexual tourism at all. If you're going to go and see the world, there's more to life than just, you know, getting females or paying for them or whatever. And throughout my time, uh, if anything, this is more so a message because I know there's a lot of passport bros that are actually like calling in or listening to your show right now. And that terminology, Lie. even though it was created and popularized, what were you going to say? It's a broadcast, not a show. Steve Harvey has a Excuse show me. and deal here, Glenn. Excuse me. Excuse me, Jason Black. I meant your broadcast, not not the show. I didn't mean to disrespect uh, what you do because what you do is very important. I meant broadcast. Excuse me. But um, I know that there are a lot of passport bros tuning in right now to this broadcast. They got their antennas up. You know what I'm saying? And um, they, you know, that terminology. They're probably going to like, you know, um, dominant society, as you like to call um, European society. They're probably going to criminalize that term, passport bro. So if anything, you know, we have to move accordingly for us uh, young intellectual Afrocentric males. We have to move accordingly and, you know, go by a different terminology and definitely not popularize um, the sexual aspects of, well, you know. Well, look, you, you actually make a lives. good point, but I want folks to understand where the passport bros screwed up at. The passport bros screwed up when they started getting out there talking and bragging and, and raising their profile. That's where they messed up. The passport bros screwed up when they started publicizing what they do. If you done found a lick, if it's sweet, everything's good where you at, you supposed to keep that on the low. These niggas ain't ready for prime time. They're too immature. A bunch of 30, 40, 50, 60 year old juvenile delinquents. That you, 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 you fellas are too damn immature, man. You're too immature. If you found that, you're supposed to keep that on the low. Like the white men do. You're supposed to keep it like the white men got it. That's why you had to make the passport, bros, because you knew the white fellas were doing it, but you weren't doing it with them. They had their little set over there. They didn't talk to you about it. They didn't let the word get out about it. They didn't publicize it. It's like Fight Club. We don't talk about it. But these fellas here dealing with their inherent inferiority complex, we make a YouTube channels about it. Hell yeah, here comes your federal indictment. You you publicize it, anybody yeah, who listen. That's the problem. The, the braggadocio within the male Afrocentric community is an issue. One that I, you know, have recognized myself at, at 28 years of age. You know what I'm saying? That like, yeah, we come, you know what I mean? Yeah, I come from, you know, the bottom. And if I get something, you know what I mean? Of course, I'd want to go and show it off or brag about it. But then I have to check myself. You know what I mean? Of course, I want to go and blow, blow, a, blow a check or something like that. But I got to check myself. I got to stack my money. I got to be quiet about what I'm doing in life. You know what I'm saying? To an extent. You see what I'm saying? And that's, well, that's, something that, that's, that's a level of maturity time, so. here. You can't have a movement when the folks who are running it or doing whatever are immature as hell. You can't have that. And that's what's crippling them. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Before I forget, I want to go back to reference with, um, I want to go back to referencing what Prince had said because I, I didn't get to say there is a, well, you don't want to have them backed into a corner. And that's an important thing. Well, no, they're not backed into a corner here. 
What I'm saying is the, the, they're not back into a corner. Ladies, new rules. Y'all change the game. Y'all changed the game and said, okay, we're going, we're going to change the game, but we're going to play by the same rules. No new game, new rules right now. Most of the women listen to me right now, prepare for your side chick application. What? Ladies, I mean, y'all change the game. So moving forward, the men are evolving and adapting. You don't have that generation of simps that you were able to depend on before. Fellows who are productive are going to start, are, there are more and more who know their worth. You've been talking about knowing your worth. Well, they know theirs. And what it's going to take to make them happy is going to change. It's have been changing. So to the ladies, you all said, welcome to sexual liberation. Welcome to sexual liberation. The ladies wanted to turn sexual liberation and I can have five and six kids by five and six different deadbeats. And nobody should say nothing. Okay, well, ladies, if that's what the rule going to be, if those are what the rules are now, well, the men have adapted. It's like, you know what? Well, hey, look here. We're going to get our weight up. We're going to get our money together. We're going to get our status up and everything. And um, yeah, and we're going to keep our options open. Now, the women still want resources and still want princess treatment. Well, ladies, the cost of princess treatment has gone up. The price has gone up. You all change the rules. So no, you're not being backed into a corner. You have been given an outlet and the outlet is new rules. So you can have a Michael B. Jordan if you can share him. You can have a Damson Idris if you're willing to share him. And if you're willing to leave when he tells you to, those are the rules now. No, it's not negotiable. You, but you created this. Okay, but ladies, you spent the last 30, 40, 50 years creating this. And you've had one demand that the men sit here and just take whatever you dish out. Oh, that's the part that's changing. No, 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 no. We don't have to do that anymore. No, no. So if you're moving different, the men move different. And since you all have said, well, having bastard kids and having abortions, I shouldn't be shamed for it. Well, hey, the men having side chicks, out the country chicks, and moving how they move. Well, you can't shame them for that either. It shouldn't even be a discussion. You shouldn't be writing articles about it. You moving different, the men moving different. I'm just the messenger. Call from Erico 857. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's going on? This is Aishan from Boston. Okay, brother, you are in Mortal Kombat with your phone, so you're going to need to get that straightened out here in a couple of seconds here. Whatever you're doing, fumbling with it, y'all got to be ready. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah. yeah, I'm good to go. You can hear me now or no? Okay, what's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, my name is Aishan. I'm from Boston. Okay, Aishan from Boston. What's on your mind? Yeah, Zayshon with a Z, but um, not about the topic, side topic. Um, okay. I signed up for your if that's If that's in Zoom, Hello? you need to hang up on Zoom then, sir. You want to just hit me on the Zoom? Would that work better for you? No, sir. You can just disconnect on Zoom. Otherwise, I'd have to remove you. Anyway, what is it, sir? Uh, I got you. Yeah, um... The trucking, the trucking. I signed up for your second tier, so I was just trying to get the information on the trucking. That's all. That's all I was going about. Okay, sir. Well, if you signed up for Patron, we do it weekends, twelve noon Central Time. So twelve noon Central Time. Yes, sir. All right, that's all I needed. Anyway, thank you very much for giving us a call here. It's, all right. Caller from Area Code Three Two One. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason. How you doing? This is Antoine from Orlando, Florida. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with your point. Um, I, I would also add that I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, I'm going to keep it real with you, that uh, even black women have some point on this with the passport bro thing. You see how they've been going at it, and let's, you see how the passports have increased. You see on news all the time that more men are getting their passports. And like you said, you see how they do on Michael B. Jordan. What, what happens when all these men leave? Here, here okay, let me, let me address that right quick. I haven't seen any statistics about that. I have seen people making suppositions. I've seen people making guesstimates. I have yet to actually see anything that gives a breakdown of, you know, male female ratio of passport possession. I haven't in America, at least I haven't seen that. Is there anecdotal evidence that it's true? Absolutely. Now that we do know, we know that the passport office has been swamped, particularly since the pandemic. Uh, but then again, the numbers were going up before the pandemic. So we do know that there's been a lot more. Anybody who's been to a post office, you've seen them down there and whatnot at the desk there. So we certainly know there's been more. I would love to actually get some hard numbers on it. If you've got real reliable hard numbers, you know, that that would be something to see because not some random article just quoting something. If you don't have a government, if the government doesn't say this is the number, you don't know. So I would love to see some hard numbers on it. We know there's been an increase. From there, we'd really be making assumptions unless somebody's seen some information that I've never seen before. I hear what you're saying. I'm just saying. I, I now, I certainly now I, I certainly but think I'm not. I'm not downing your point though. I'm not downing your point. Certainly, we know there's a lot more females who got passports because they're all on Facebook. Because of course they can't be quiet. <laughs> and certainly, we know that more men have gotten passports because they're all on Instagram and can't be quiet. I would just love to know what those ratios right. are. But go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm also saying I agree with your point that they're trying to they're going to try to criminalize black men on there. But I want to add another thing. I think they're not going to let white men go either, but they're not going to criminalize them. They're just going to try to keep them here because the reason why I'm going with that point is you look at daily wire and some of those people on the alt right, they want those white men to stay here. They, they, they take care of their single moms here and have more white babies. Oh, absolutely. If, look, if I look mean, look, that- the white men in the case of the white guys, these, this is weapons that they're using to, to, you know, revolt against the government. I mean, they're making no bones about it that, yeah, for them, this is, this is personal. So they're, they're making it very clear that, yeah, if I'm, if I'm not going to get that preferential treatment, let me go ahead and see if I can move it somewhere else. Now in their case, they have a different term. You haven't seen a bunch of black men using it. Now, the white guys are on YouTube, but the term they're using is expat, expatriate. So that's the term you're hearing from them. They ain't talking about international dating. They're talking about, you know, moving your citizenship. That's what the white guys are talking Uh about. So they just get established in America. And if it's no longer their liking, saying, let me go somewhere else or you know, how much I got to work a year to get my money claimed somewhere else. So it's a difference in, in what you're hearing the white guys say. So you're absolutely dead on the money about that. This is their way of revolting. The fe- the white females are going to revolt. The white dudes ain't talking about dating. They're talking about, you know what? Let me just take my wealth and my money with me. All the way with me. I'm not waiting till retirement. Let me come take it all now. Can I add a, another point? What you saying about the white man revolting? A new term I, I see white men calling it. They call it toll paid. Have you heard of that? That's a new one for me. It's basic. So it came up when that white girl that got beat up by that black girl that got slammed in the head. So if you look on Twitter and type in toll paid, you see pictures of white women beat up saying that's because you dated a, a black man. And that's toll paid. Okay, well, in her case, yeah, that video that's been going around and stuff like this. So, I'm, yeah, it, I was aware that the the white girl had dated the black person at some point, a black guy at some point. Yeah. But um, the toll paid thing, now, that's a new thing. I will say if it's reached that point, yeah, I mean, the war is on. The oh, war yeah. is look, because look it up on the, what, Twitter. what the white men are, if, I mean, like I said, I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying if it's reached that point, 
then what the white men are saying is we're already pulling our financial support. Now we're going to start the young white men. Cause if you're on Twitter, this young white men, the young white men are like, Oh, we're going to do you one better. We're not just pulling the financial. We're not just pulling the, uh, social support. We're going to pull the physical, all that physical preference mm-hmm. and protection you were getting. And you used to be able to Emmett till these Negroes. Yeah. You know what? We decided until you get back in line, you know what? Let them have you. If they get a hold of you, let them have them. Yeah. So if it's, if it has precipitated at that point, you're entering a, for them, dangerous new level. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's quite interesting that you type that in Twitter toll paid. I, I suggest everyone look at it. They have all these memes of a black guy with a white woman and she got beat up and yet they call it toll paid. So that basically that's what you get. And we're not going to protect you. Just like you said, that's what they mean by that. Okay. I'll check it out. Thank you very much for giving us a call here. I mean, if it's gotten to that point, here we go. The gloves are coming off for the young generation. That, if that's normalized for them, oh, the gloves are coming off. It's like, oh no, you ain't no rules. Anything go, anything goes. Oh, okay, let the niggas have you. I hope you get beat up by pack of niggers. What? Okay. Okay. Oh, if we go in here with it. If we're going here with it, that's a cultural shift. And notice they're, they've excommunicated the Ben Shapiro's and the Matt Walsh's. They don't want to hear from them. The red pill community, the young cats, they don't want to hear from the Matt Walsh's and the Ben Shapiro's. They ain't got no stroke. They ain't got no pull with these young cats. They don't want to hear it. So the only, yeah, they're white males, but these young white males don't want to emulate you. Hell, a lot of the older ones don't want to emulate you. They don't want you coming to them with the traditional conservative talk. They ain't hearing it. They don't want to hear it. You're in trouble, man. It's a bad spot to be in. Caller from area code 516. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, brother Jason. This is Adam from Queens, New York. All right. Adam from Queens. What's on your mind? Right. So everything here is like, it's more race bound. And I don't find it. I don't find it. Uh, hold on. I got an echo coming in. I don't know. Okay, sir. We don't have an echo here, but go ahead and make your point. That, brother. All right, so um, it's always been a thing, if you've ever noticed uh, the Asian population and the white population, because even over here, if you look at their Republican parties and all the things that they do, like when I notice in New York a lot, as you always see these older white dudes with these younger Asian women, very, it's a common thing. It's not even oh, like yeah. rare. It's, it's common. Oh, yeah. It, so, it certainly has taken and, off in pop. It used to be the domain of the Rupert Murdochs and stuff. But now the average rank and file white man, since they saw that they get that deference from Asian women, they saw it's, it's a whole different treatment. So all they really had to do was get over that social stigma of, quote, going outside the race. And now it's the thing to do. Boom, bing. And then, as you mentioned in, uh, in your broadcast before, which was an excellent point, is when you said even about the workers, <clears throat> how they used to have to outsource things. But now when they bring these illegals in, it's just like they instead of outsourcing, again, they, they bring them in and they don't have to do that extra work. And I'm starting to see that, hey, with these Venezuelans, um, Mexicans, light-skinned Puerto Ricans, light-skinned Dominicans, Cubans, um, they have no problem mixing with them either. So... I when you said that in that broke and then I'm listening now I'm like hmm that's interesting because that's kind of the same dynamic that's going on I mean it's taking part it's all it's all part of the system I mean it's all yeah going I on. mean they 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 know this these are the groups that you named there those are groups that defer to white men they give them preferential treatment I mean it's just it is what it is they give them preferential treatment and before now they have simply been content to make them either their workforce or make them maybe they side lover or something. Now they're going to a different level. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to hide them under a blanket. If they do divorce a white woman, they're not going to fool with white women anymore. They're just like, you know what? I want to go where I got power and control. Now white women know this 
which is why you're starting to see them veer back off that feminism thing. And it's okay. Let's see. We can go ahead and fix this because what they're, they're not going to take white men seriously. I want to talk to all the white guys right now to all the white dudes. And I actually, I do have white people in my audience. Uh, hello to everyone there. You're, and you're welcome to be here by the way. But um, I want to give y'all, Rolo ain't going to tell you any of this because he doesn't know. And even if he did, he couldn't articulate it properly. I want you all to understand that white women are not going to take you all seriously until you cut the money off. To all the white men out there, it is not enough that you got a non-white chick or something like that until you start blowing the bag. To the white dudes, You got to give them what you were given the white women. You going to have to give them the bag. When you start seeing a bunch of fit, you know, Asian chicks with muscle tone, sporting their Gucci bags and their G-wagons, with the white dudes sitting there cheesing, now the white women as a group are going to start taking you all seriously until you pull that trigger. It ain't going to work. They're, they're going to, they're calling your bluff. It's not enough to date them. It isn't even enough to marry them and have children with them. The transfer of the resources, giving those women the cushioned preferential treatment that you've given white women for all these centuries. That's the real prize. The socioeconomic status. And until you pull that trigger on that rifle, they will not take you seriously. They will continue to challenge you because they don't believe you. But when they wake up and they are cut off from the resources and the status, everything changes when that occurs. But right now, what you've signaled to them is that you're holding out that you're doing these other things as tactics and not a strategy that you'll fool with the Asian women until the white women get it together. And then some of you go a little bit further. It's like, I'm not really checking for a white woman. Yeah. But until that Asian chick is pushing, pushing that Bentley until the Asian chick got the red bottoms until the Asian chick got the Birkin bag until the Asian chick is on that pedestal. White women will not believe you. Why, furthermore, why should they? Why would they compete to have a mediocre white man? So as far as they're concerned, well, there was nothing special about you in the first place. You can't upgrade anything. You were already the guy that we were rejecting. It's really about the guys who got something to offer who say, yeah, we don't want you either. And not just we don't want you. I'm going to give this to somebody else. When that happens, Katie bar the damn door. You're going to have the women out there, like down there in Florida, they changed the laws down there to make it harder for women to get alimony, which by the way, uh, salute to them for that. (laughs) Although to be totally honest, alimony needs to be abolished altogether. New game, new rules. These women are strong and independent and working. Get your strong and independent work. Ask if you got a strong and independent divorce, go get you a strong and independent job. If the man doesn't get to get sexual access to you, you still ain't going to come over and cook and clean and do your wifely duties. How the hell is he going to still appear and perform masculine uh, duties for take quote, taking care of you. You're not taking care of him. If you destroyed the marriage. Okay. You walk away from everything. Go get you a strong independent job. And let it be what it's going to be. However, the white women will not believe them until they pull that particular trigger. I'll let you have the last word. Brother, I remember uh, white folks freak out when we get little parts of movies like Star Wars and et cetera. These, these people done made a movie called The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise. I'm going to land my plane there and be one, brother. Oh, brother, Last Samurai, uh, Blue-Eyed Samurai, the, the white, alt-right dudes online. Now, they hate race swapping in movies. and They don't like, why are you putting these black people in a movie during a time period? Game of Thrones, why are there black people there? This is a this is an anagram of, of medieval Europe. Why are there black people there? And yet they have no problem interjecting white people. That Shogun, 
They have no problem interjecting white people into anything, any time frame, any place in the world. White people belong everywhere, but you show, wait a minute, what is that? So just keep that in mind. Caller from Erico 229, you're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, brother. This is Rob from Bad Austin. Rob from Bad Austin, what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I was thinking um, with the passport bros and um, going, you know, they go overseas looking for women, whether they just going for sexual access or to actually find, you know, a wife. And instead of staying here, you know, looking for a sister. But, you know, I understand why, because, you know, females that they are, they have more of a masculine traits than men, some of them. They, they have toxic masculinity more so than men sometimes. And so do, you know, it's kind of like you have to pick and choose. Do I want a woman with traditional values, a traditional wife with honor, respect, and you know, traditional woman, or do I want to put up with a sassy mouth? Brother, I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem, though. Uh, your question, I believe, is sincere, but it's being phrased incorrectly. I don't think the question is, do you want a woman with traditional values to be a wife? Or do you want some sassy mouth shrew? I think the real question is, do these women want to be wives? Or are they looking for a sponsor whose sole purpose is to bloat her already hideously inflated ego and to patch together the financial holes and mess she's made for herself? So you are a utility, but you're not a man. You're not a leader. She wants a marriage because of the financial and social benefits, not because of the emotional need to be under a man's management. The real question isn't whether the men want this type of woman or that type of woman. The real question is, do these women want to be wives at all? Or do they want to be takers and then call that being a wife? Okay, yeah, because me, myself, I would personally, I don't, I mean, I, I would be kind of want to water down my bloodline. I don't know how that sounds to some people, but, you know, take it as it is. I do not want to, I wouldn't, I would rather not water down my bloodline. Well, I mean, you certainly have the... Would that be wrong? Well, I mean, no, I mean, I'm not really sure exactly what you mean by that, but certainly you don't want to give your your children a lesser legacy than you had. Okay. Yeah, I just say I'm a black man. I'd rather be with a black woman, but I don't want to live through hell just to be with one. Okay, brother. Well, here's the thing about it here. When you fellas say that kind of thing, I'm all for that. But then I got to take the flip side of it here. So once again, where do you live? Excuse me? The city you're in. I want you to remind everybody. Now, he heard that. Now he's freezing up. Sir, I want you to remind no, everyone uh, yeah. the city that you're in. The city that I'm in? But also? Okay. You notice he froze up and he's like, oh, hell, I don't like where this is going. No, he probably doesn't. So, with that being, I want, before you fellas sit up here and call the women out, it's like, yeah, they, they get frozen up. They get shook. He's like, oh, wait, minute. here we go. Yeah, because understand something. Oh, no, 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 no. I no, just no, no. Yeah, 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 you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, fellas. You got to earn the right to criticize this team. 
So if you're going to say, but I don't want to put up with the hell that comes with them. I understand that. However, would you be a person who's in a situation where the women are like, okay, and what's the benefit? Mm-hmm. Okay. He lives in Valdosta, Georgia. Nice, small town. Now, I'm from a mid-sized city, so I'm never going to diss anybody who's not from a major city. Perfectly fine. Um, if, if anybody wants to look up the median income of Valdosta, Georgia, not skewed for the university, there's some interesting reading there. And my point is, fellas, once again, I said that for the white dudes, but it applies to the black men as well. Women are going to submit to the level of excellence that the man provides. So the only thing I would ask you is, is that when you say, oh, I don't have to put up with a bunch of hell understood. Do you qualify for a woman who's not going to give you hell? Of course. Why do you say that? I don't think anybody, I don't think, I don't think any man deserves to go through hell. That's not true. According to, you know, how much you make or. Uh, actually, like okay. That, okay, sir. You know, okay. Le- okay. Now listen to what he just said there. I don't think any man should have to go through you hell. Deserve to be by yourself. Okay. I don't <laughs> think any man yourself, deserves to yeah, go through but... hell based on his income. Now, what he says on its face to some of you who are not critical thinkers might sound accurate. Let's add, let's go a little deeper. Now, sir, do you have any children? Yes. Okay, strike one. Uh, do you have any daughters? Any what? Daughters. Yes. Strike two. And how old is she? 20. Strike three, you're out. Okay, now the reason why I say that is because your daughter is 20 years old. Is she married? Yes. Okay. Does her husband's income matter to you as her father? Mm, Somewhat. Okay, thank you. It's not irrelevant. Now, the man that she married, how long they been married? Mm, About two years now. Okay, this nigga kicked her smooth, slapped the hell out the house. Okay. She, <laughs> and she went, she walked across the stage at high school it. graduation and um, went, went straight to the altar. So away we go. Okay. But here's yeah, my, he went straight to the military. So, uh, all you, right. know. Uh, you know what I'm going to say about that? <clears throat> He's in his twenties too. Uh, you know what I'm going to say about that? <laughs> yeah. All right, she, yeah. She's, she's here for the ride. Yeah, y'all. She's along for the ride. Yeah. But in any case, um, my point about that is, yeah, but she's going to expect him to at least remain the way he is. If that ever changed, she's going to change too. So, yeah, she's probably very agreeable as long as he's the man she married. If his finances change, her attitude toward him will also change. Do you think that she would be wrong for that? If his actions change? If his attitude about working changes and thus his, I'm sorry, if his income changes, her attitude is going to change too. Do you think she would be wrong for that? Yes. You think that you're, if your son-in-law went from making $50,000 a year to $25,000 a year, and if your daughter was complaining about it, you think she'd be wrong for that? No, 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 no. Okay, there Uh you go. Thank you. All right. So, yes, a man's income should determine the type of female he gets. Hell, it should determine if he gets one. Because by definition, as every female has a father, and there's not a one of you who wants your daughter with a man who ain't going anywhere. Not a one of you. Every single one of you wants your daughter to be with somebody who's got something to offer and is taking her somewhere. Not a one of you is like, well, if you ain't going nowhere, that's I. No, none of you are okay with that. Now, the mothers, that's a different matter. Generation hood rat will tolerate that. But there's not a single father in the world who's comfortable with his daughter being with a man who's giving her a lesser life than the one that he gave her. Now, maybe you don't require your daughter to be living in, 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 in Buckhead, 
but you would not be okay with a man marrying your daughter and giving her a lesser life than the one you gave her. Now that you wouldn't be okay with. And you would be perfectly fine with her giving her hell, 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 hell about that because yeah, she's not, hey, wait, my, hey, I, I, I wasn't living like this when I was with my damn dad. We done took a step down. Yeah, your daughter's going, now, and what's he gonna say? She give me hell about that. Okay, well, some people say it's hell. Some people say it's criticizing, but the bottom line is he may feel like, oh, this is severe. Maybe it should be. He's not performing. So, for anybody who thought there, it's like, eh, a man shouldn't catch hell. Actually, eh, you probably should. Under certain circumstances, yeah, you should. You sure should. You sure should. A woman shouldn't be with a man and there's nothing going on and nothing to look forward to and she's not being elevated or upgraded in any way. Or worse, she's taking a downgrade. So, yeah, time to raise hell. If it was your daughter, if it was my daughter, yeah, time to raise hell. Actually, to totally honest, I'm not sure how much hell I would tell him to raise. He's like, okay, time to raise stakes and leave. Because I got a 12-month rule about that. He's got 12 months to at least stop the bleeding. And if he doesn't after 12 months, yeah, hopefully he ain't had no kids with him. You can get back out there. But other than that, no. I'll let y'all the last word. Uh, yeah, but... um. I'm glad you you gave me a lot of insight on that. And it was just something that was on my mind because, you know, it was like you got to make a decision between one or two. And, you know, I just, but, yeah, you're right. I believe that a a man, if you're not able to take care of a woman, you shouldn't be with one anyway. You know, you can't provide a certain lifestyle that she deserves and needs. No, you don't deserve one anyway, let alone be going through all that BS, you know. So, yeah, you're definitely right about that. Thank you, everyone, for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller from area code 904. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Sounds like you're panhandling on the corner somewhere. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, it took a little long to get to me, so I, I kind of went to the store. But um, this is this is Passport Gang in, in, in um, the chat. Uh, so I heard about this live stream. I was in my Africa um, with that group. I, I first found out about you um, around the time Kevo Samuels died. I heard one of your streams, and I said, man, this guy's cooking fire. But um, I believe sometime between then and now, you said something that kind of made me think that you were anti passport bros. So maybe I misunderstood you. So this is really the first time I'm really listening to you on the topic. But, um, but yeah, um, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, for example, um, a lot of us are going to Africa. It's not all about okay, sir. Yeah, sir. And, and stuff like that. It's, that, that. That's not a misconception. I mean, passport bros pretty much get in where they fit in. So that that's not a misconception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, um, now, by the but, but, the, but by the but by the same me. token, what you just said is actually irrelevant. And the reason it is is because mm-hmm. by their own admission, the passport bros only mention two hotspots: South America and Southern Asia, and that's all they mention. Yeah, so. With that being said, there may be a there, sir. There may be a few of you talking something different, but the majority of them. So this isn't even up for debate. You can just Google this and YouTube this. Mm-hmm. The majority of them are broadcasting mm-hmm. or talking to you or talking about South America or Southern Asia. This ain't a debate, bro. You're debating math right now. So just because you don't do that, that has no bearing on the majority of the others. It's just math. Okay. Okay. Granted. Um. What you what you did there is you just mentioned two very broad regions. I mean, South America is a continent. South, but it ain't South Africa. Asia has um, billions of people. <laughs> but okay, but it's not. But so, it's not Africa. But, but, but it's but, not. But the point is, it's not Africa. They they for the most part they only name two mm-hmm. places. So that's not me putting the unfair jacket or skewing the numbers. They're the ones who do that. I'm just reporting the news. Right, right. I mean, there are definitely some places that are more uh, common than others. 
But I mean, I know, I know guys. Why? Yeah, I know guys why? Go but why? Europe. Okay, there are places more common um, than others. Great, but why? Uh, it's just, it's just preference. It's all about preference. I mean, okay, but why? Everybody will find a place that. Um, there could be, there could be several reasons. Um, yeah, y'all, they're they're not ready. Right, so they're not ready. They have this. This is the real problem with this. They're not really ready. And he's showing right now. They're not ready. Just that quickly, you broke down. This is a simple one word question. Not ready. And, and they're folding. No, 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 no sir. No, no. You just said, well, those no, places I'm get ready. most of the I'm play. Ready. Okay, just... why? Why is it that they prefer South America and Southern Asia, sir? Why? Uh, those places, those places have the tourist infrastructure. I mean, they're ready, and um, they've already been opened up. Because, like, so Africa earlier, doesn't. The white guys have been doing this, sir. Africa doesn't. Um, all, not, 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 not all the much. white, all the not white, all the white men, and all the Asian men who are crawling all over Africa, and you telling me it doesn't? The infrastructure ain't opened up, dude. Are you serious with what you just said? No, it, it depends. It depends where. Like, if you're talking Kenya or South Africa, yes. Okay, but Kenya, like, uh, South Africa, places, Ni- like Kenya, Sierra South Leone Africa, Nigeria, or... hell, Morocco. We can go down the damn list, sir. There's plenty Niger- of folk. There's Niger- plenty of folk. Sir, there's plenty of white men in no, Nigeria. But- there's plenty of white men in Nigeria. And I just named Morocco for a reason. That one kind of explains itself. So, sir, there's plenty of white men and Asian men on the beaches and living it up over there. So that can't be the answer. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Nigeria because that's actually where I'll be going um, in in July. But the thing about Nigeria is you actually have to mail, like, your physical passport to the embassy and then um, pay that fee. They don't make it – they don't They don't give you visa on arrival or or it's not visa-free for, for any other country, no visa on arrival. So, so just the, there's extra steps to even get in the door. So that's why that's why it's a little okay, bit sir, but, okay, more Okay, sir, even, even if that were the complete facts on that, that's just one place. So the bottom line is Africa is mm-hmm. the, pretty much the largest continent in the world. And yeah. no, sir, you got, no you got plenty of options besides that. So, yeah, take Nigeria off the board. And the other 39 countries? Uh, the other – I mean, hey – Listen, I, I, I don't understand why some guys prefer Colombia. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Philippines. Now, um, now this honestly, is now honestly, it, just uh, remember, if you have to be dishonest in a conversation, then you don't actually have a point. Now, you okay. know, you know why. You know why. Yeah, you, you, you got me there. I mean, a, a lot of guys, I mean... um. See, the reason I don't want to get into that is because I feel like everybody's entitled to their preference. Okay, but did you notice I'm not arguing with um, it? Okay, listen, you're talking to me. I'm not arguing about that Mm -hmm. either. I have noticed I have not I have not raised race as an issue except in one regard. These guys get treated by them Asian Mm -hmm. chicks. Shout out Austin Holloman. They get treated by the Asian chicks the same way that they claim to get treated by the American chicks, and yet they told us that they have found a strategy for avoiding, quote, Western culture and Western values and Western behavior from women, and their own video tolerating the same thing from the Asian chicks they claim they were getting over here. That's the only, that's the extent to race that I talk about. That happens. So, in other words, oh, no, their, I, I their, entire, a lot of their entire rationale for doing it, we already proved that's debunked. But there's only one thing that you can get in those places that you can't get in North America. A wealth of majority non-black females and non-black identifying. You get a majority of mm-hmm. that. And you get to go into the cover of, well, it's the makeup of the country. You get to go for that. And yes, 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 I know about Brazil, but that's not where these guys hang out in Brazil. They go on the white side, which is why they're always talking about oh, no, that's, spending that, their money. That, that right there is not true. That, that's, not, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> brother, I'm, brother, I'm not, I'll yeah. have to, brother, I'll have to uh, argue it, about this. We, you can go to the YouTube channels and see it. This isn't a debate. It really ain't. You can't rewrite history okay. all of a sudden. Okay. Okay, cool. But um, I, I do agree with you uh, when you say that the, the, main, the main thing that Passport Bros messed up on is being too vocal about it. I, I, I get upset with a lot of these brothers all the time 
when I see them um, in the streets of Medellin or um, even in, in Thailand or whatever, and, and they have their cameras out just recording everything, um, doing street interviews. To me, to me, that, that that's very corny, and not just corny; it's destructive. So, well, it certainly I, I it certainly puts a spotlight on them, yeah. and what it shows is they're completely oblivious to their to their status as black men. They think they've got some non-black mm-hmm. status and they 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 blown the spot up is what they've done. And now I see it moving to what mm-hmm. I see as a dangerous new level. When the dominant society is looking oh, at yeah, it, yeah. they got plans for doing something with this. So for the white men it'll be their oyster and for you it'll be your handcuffs. That's what I, that's what I foresee. Coming. Oh yeah. Now, brother, yeah, so, where, so, brother. I now, mean, let me find know, out here. Where are your people from originally? Um, from so I have dual citizenship, Bahamas. Um, but I grew up in Miami. Okay, that's cool. And you've been going back and yeah, forth but to I live, Africa. I live in Jacksonville. Yeah, I, I live in Jacksonville, Florida now. Though that's that's where I am currently. But uh, I'll be I'll be out in in Colombia next month, and then in Africa after that. Okay, well, certainly, like but, I say, I don't so, want any of you being held to a different standard than anybody else. If they can go around and globe trot and sample the local females and stuff, I'm not going to argue that you shouldn't be able to do that. However, mm-hmm. motives, I think, are important only to the extent that it's like, okay, are we selling a false bill of goods, which Passport Bros tends to do, or are we encouraging something different from what we're actually doing? Right, but there, there's there's a there's a there's a very mo- most uh, I would say there's a very loud uh, toxic minority. They're they're, they're like no. very very loud. It's not it's not even all. Um, they're different. They're different types of passport roles. Yeah, but 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 the like quiet but the quiet um, majority rolls with it. The quiet yeah, majority yeah, rolls right. with them. It's, it's not like the, the, these guys are on. It's not like the Austin Hollemans are on one page and the rest of them dudes are on another. No, no, they're they're all on the same page. Just one's more vocal than the other, but they're all in agreement. You, you can't find any dissension among them about hey, we shouldn't do that. You're the first person I've encountered so far who said yeah, they need to move a little different. Well, I mean, if you're in the WhatsApp groups I'm in, like the the which are more exclusive, like. You see, see the thing. The thing you have to do when you're a seasoned traveler like me. The first thing you you do is you find a community. So what's happening is I would say about ninety percent of these dudes are the flaming passport bros. They're what we call weekend warriors. These are guys that work at the UPS or somewhere in the warehouse. They get two weeks out of out, out of the year for vacation. Um, so you know they go there. They 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 trick off heavy. Uh, they fall in love with prostitutes. Um, they they. They walk through Sosua with, with, with a body cam and hidden cameras on, filming the girls and, you know, oh, isn't she so sweet, but she's a prostitute. There are those guys, and then there are guys like me that are either retired, I'm not retired, or, but I, I am a cybersecurity engineer and I work remote full time, so I'm able to spend long periods of time overseas. So what that does is, I'm able to get a better feel for the culture. I'm able to join a community, um, a community of other like-minded individuals. So it, it, it's, it's different levels to this. Well, certainly, like I say, just play by the rules. And there are rules. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get over here on Zoom. All right, we got Tony over here on Zoom. It looks like he's fresh from a firefighting school all right tony what's on your mind oh he's trying to get this newfangled technology working can you hear me uh yes sir what's on your mind how you doing uncle jay uh i was just calling to kind of check in with you i i'm like uh i gotta i gotta be bright out here because yeah, people will run you over with their trucks and shit when you try to get these chemicals off but uh what i wanted to ask you is uh do you think these people will probably look at this, these type of situations as like sexual conquest? Pretty much the reason why they try to promote white men to do it, but they don't want black men to do it. Because if you think about that situation when uh, 
that one white boy went to Africa and he was just spreading the AIDS and getting all the women pregnant and everything. They were, they really wasn't no. Um, yeah, they didn't sanction him. They didn't do anything to him. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, look, absolutely, they monitor us. They monitor us, and the reason for monitoring you is to control you. That's it. So whether you are in America or whether you're outside of it, they're monitoring you. They're tracking you. They're seeing what you're doing. The Where the passport bros screwed up is what I'm saying is that you were too damn vocal. It doesn't matter what it is that we're organizing for. If you begin organizing, they're watching you. And they're going to try to disrupt whatever that is. Because they don't consider any level of organization by us to not be a threat. So even if you just organize and to run the hose, it's like, hey, but eventually somebody going to get serious among that group. So now it's like, okay, well, how remember in the words of Dr. John Henry Clark, oh, I got to go there. Uh, everything that moves in European society moves for war. So in their minds, even though you aren't trying to weaponize sex in their minds, that's the way they think of it. Yeah. Why you're going to weaponize this. Yeah, you're right. Everything, uh, sex is about everything except for sex. Sex is about power. And that's the way they're thinking about it is, okay, you could easily weapon. If you all get together in a group is organized and if you become the women's preference, well, you can weaponize that. Oh, we better destabilize this quick. We got to destabilize this early. So it's, it's, it's the slave codes, man. If you see a number of them get together in a group, there better be a white person there. You better be monitoring them because at any time they going to stop partying and BSing and get serious. Somebody's going to say, you know what? We could use this to have some real power. And at that point, they're off to the races. Right. Now you got them all organized. So it's, they're okay as long as it's one or two of you messing up. We can put you in jail. A group of you get together, eh, you all could actually organize something serious. Do you think? Uh, do you think these other countries they'll uh, they'll start to catch on to what's going on and everything? And you think they'll probably uh, kind of turn like make some laws against uh, the type of stuff that's going on? Yeah, I mean, look, that, that's that's what happened down there with Austin Holloman down there. So he was in South America and found out the hard way that what Jason was saying was dead on the money. Right, he had to flee the whole damn continent. You thought so, that before it even happened. I'm I just trying to. Yeah, he had any time out, and all of them were dead ass quiet when that happened. Now, when that happened, they were all dead quiet for about a week. Then they started chirping again. So you know how that goes. Hard heads don't learn easy. But uh, no, brother, look, all they need first of all is already in the culture. I don't know why people want to sit up here and try to pretend. This is one of the reasons I don't like talking to to the fellows who hang out in Asia. Because they always try to convince me, ain't no, there, there's no anti-black racism over there. They're always trying to convince me. Oh, these folks are just, it ain't like that, Jason. And sure enough, as soon as you get off the damn plane, here we go. Um, these other folks there, number one, they already have a hostility. Number two, even if they didn't, all it takes is one letter from the U.S. State Department, and that changes. If the U.S. State Department tells them y'all need to move like there's a group down there that y'all need to be watching for, brother, they're going to jump. Right. Now, as a black tourist, if you ask come up missing, you just gone. But if the U.S. State Department calls them and says, hey, there's a group down there. And if you see anybody talking about passport, bro, and y'all need to surveil them and the police, not just the police need to be on them. They're going to do it right there. No questions right. asked. They're going to do it. I don't know why these folks is tripping because they've already showed their animosity towards us on U.S. soil. I mean, Latasha Harlan is example number one. They'll shoot you in the back. You can't walk through their stores without they talking about hurry up and buy. <laughs> well, like I say, brother, look, it's, it's, it's for a sexual thing. And, you know, the first part of what you said there from Oscar Wilde was correct. Everything in life is about sex for these guys. And they are, they. you heard from Austin. Uh, he been dreaming about that since he was a kid. You think, you, as soon as he had a moment to run for it, brother, look, that's it. He been waiting to do this since he was a kid. You ain't gonna tell him nothing. He is willing to take a bullet for this. He been thinking about this since he was eight or 10 years old. He's willing to take a bullet. He don't give a damn. Drug runners, kidnappers, whatever. Well, let me go see he got down there and didn't get kidnapped the first day. And he's like, oh, this is great. Everything's sweet. Everything is sweet. Till the day it wasn't. Now he's like, okay, don't worry. Everything's sweet in Asia. 
All right, till the day it ain't. Hell yeah, them boys lame anyway, cause there's plenty of good black women over here that's uh willing to, you know, submit and do it, do what you want them to do. You just gotta have your shit together. Well, that statement you just made comes with an asterisk. So we got to be honest with ourselves about that in that regard. However, for what they want, there's no shortage of black women here. However, I'm not even debating about that part with them. I don't even have a dispute about that part. If you don't want to deal with quote unquote American women, perfectly fine understood but what i was saying before the previous caller is don't be disingenuous or misleading or talk to me stupid about what your rationale or your motive is because then women in south america are no different they got gucci stores and every damn thing else and if you anybody who's been to miami you swimming in colombian chicks and south american females who are as american as anything else you've seen i'm talking about with the accents and double uh, uh bilingual and everything else she fresh off the plane and as, as American as anything else you got around here. And she came here that way. And any man who's been down there, damn it. If you've been to the, you know, the, uh, Copacabana, right. you've seen that. If you've hung out at any of the five star resorts down there, you've seen it. But some jackass trying to tell you that ain't what's going on with all them Colombian women down there walking with older white men who done got them booed up and paid up. And then coming to you telling you that ain't what's going on. Those women are different. She ain't sitting out there on that beach with flat abs because she's looking to meet a bum or she wants some sexual companionship. She looking to get sponsored. And yeah, they yeah. doing that. And you talking to us like we stupid or crazy. Because we, we're just not arguing about stupid stuff anymore. So no, man, it's... it's if the, if you want to go globe trotting for interracial sexual access, knock yourself out you go right ahead and you do that but don't lie to me like i don't see what you're doing don't lie to me like that you want to go get with some exotic chicks okay fine and exotic just means different you want a chick who's never been to america all right knock yourself out but don't lie and say that's not what you're doing don't tell me well she's got a better attitude lying ass don't no, tell no, me no. that she's different lie i'll let you have the last word Nah, I just want to say uh, I appreciate everything you do. You always keep us uh, keep us straight and on code and everything, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate you, huh? Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Look, I mean, just let it be what it's gonna be. If you want to get with some Asian chicks because they're Asian, leave it at that. Just stand on that and let it be. With it. Don't talk to me like I'm dumb. Oh, they act better. They act different. Yeah, they got an accent when they start talking trash to you. Ain't that right, Austin? So just, hey, you want to go kick it with some white Dominican chicks? All right, just say that. Be a man and just say that. Hey, Jason, it's easier. I'm not from New York and I don't know how to move among the Dominican chicks in New York City. You trip over a Dominican chick on every damn block in the Bronx. Okay, say that. Say that. Okay, that's fine. I can respect it. You just tell the truth about it. I can respect that. I've never given anybody a hard time about that. It is what it is. If you want to, hey, all right, there you go. No, they act different. Okay, man, stop lying. Not that you did good till you got to that part. Once you start the lying thing, it's like, okay, now I got to dismiss you. I'm not talking to a fool. Just don't lie about it. Hey, Jason, I want to kick it with white French women. Okay, well, I just stand on it. If that's what's gonna be, stand on it. Don't sit up. They act different, man. Get the hell out of here. I found a haven of women who are not touched by Western culture. Western culture is global, sir. Yeah, but these chicks on this street are different. Okay. Call from Erico five one six. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yes, Jason. Uh, good evening, man. This is Desmond from New York City. All right, Desmond, which um, borough? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry. Which which borough in New York? Uh, Queens. All right, Desmond from Queens, what's on your Queens. mind? All right, uh, let me first say I commend you for uh, for tackling this topic, and I was incensed when you brought up the Michael B. Jordan situation because 
I've been noticing this theme that that there's just this this inability to allow black men to have access and power and pride uh, and options, and it's getting to, to such a such a high level. I don't see people. Wait a minute, Desmond sounds like a coconut. I'm, I should, maybe I shouldn't be looking at. I'm a, I'm I'm FBA to the to okay, the brother. Chat. If anyway. you brother, if you're not gonna talk to me, you gotta go. So. What do you want okay. to say? No, I got it. I got it. I got it. So anyway, anyway, uh, my main concern is, uh, well, first of all, the root has been a problem for about a minute. If you remember, they had this thing about uh, black men, straight black men are the white people of black people. So they have a thematic thing going on with how black men are, are supposed to be perceived. This is supposed to be, supposed to be a black-themed uh, uh, media platform. But beyond that, my concern is how are we going to be able to align the the black manosphere? Uh, The fear that I – there's always been this fear, and I'm pretty sure you talk about this all the time. There's always been this fear of black men uh, aligning, being traditionally masculine, and moving forward. And I don't know why this – even our women seem to be – in disarray with understanding that there's always been this need to control us. Well, but Even in okay. the political well, that, well, that's not, well, that's not true. I mean, look, no, everybody understands that. Nobody is ignorant of that. Everybody is trying to do the same thing. It's like that tears for fears song. Everybody, everyone wants to rule the world. Everyone wants to police black men. Everyone wants to police us, our behavior, our options. If you're a black male who ain't got a damn thing going for you, Nobody cares what you do. Crank out the bastard kids, lay up with whatever. You can lay up with doctors, lawyers. You can do what you want to. A black man who actually has something going for himself, oh, you have to be controlled. See, the fellow who ain't got nothing going for him, he's already controlled. That guy is already harmless. Hell, women rule, hell, children rule him. Take a look at Zion Williamson. This guy is ruled over by women and children. Women right uh, now, soon to be children. A-, uh, a man who ain't got nothing, eh, he's already controlled. The rest of you, oh, now you're a problem because you didn't go off and go screw up. You've shown that you're not looking to be controlled. Now we got to start advertising the need to control you. That's what you're seeing there. And nobody I is ignorant about it. Nobody's ignorant. Nobody is unknowing. Nobody just doesn't get it. Nobody's falling into a trap or they're unaware. Everybody knows who's doing it. The root knows who's doing it. The black women who co on it, they know what they're doing. And we have to be honest that, yeah, that's what's going on. They know what they're doing. How could so they I'm not? I'm confused on that. What, wh- wh- why, would, why would our own women co-sign on us being controlled then? Security. Or at least the illusion wow. of it. So a man who is controlled is what? Secure. Remember, Russell Wilson, take a look at their ideal. Russell Wilson is a simp cuck who is proud to be. And he is completely under Ciara's control. The women understand that they take a look at him and see he's the Christian and she ain't acting nothing like it. And the women are like, yeah, get over on him. You get over on him, girl. And all the women talk about is how she controls him his finances, his future, where he lives, she is in charge. So it is an exploitation fantasy. Look, if you let men run around too long, eventually the environment gets violent. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean destructive, but with all things remaining equal, men are always jockeying for dominance. Women are always jockeying for exploitation. Now, under regular societal norms, we call it, you know, protecting and providing and nurturing. Yeah, but if they're allowed to just run as wild as they want to be, that protection and providing and nurturing desire turns into exploiting you. Now it turned, it went from being, see, a wife is supposed to love you as much as you love her. The women today are saying, I want to get married and I want him to, quote, love me but I do not want to be required to love him. And love me means what, give me the there? resources, give me the status. You'd be the perfect little cut dude. You'll be an alpha when I want, but the rest of the time you're a beta. 
uh, and you just adore me and kiss the ground I walk on, but I do not have to do the same for you. And that's exploitation. And that's what you're looking at now. Well, well, well when were the, well, I will say specifically the black manosphere, when will the black manosphere channel something like what I perceive as black female solipsism? In other words, uh, the black girl magic, black girls rock. Uh, why is that now not allowed to be an equivalent for black men to have that? Yeah, I mean, we look, need, we, we, we need it. Look, we here's the it. issue. Seriously, seriously. Here's the issue. I need those of you on the red pill. It's time to detox. Time to pick up, pick up the black book. Um, here's the issue with Rolo Tomasi's talking points and solipsism and things like that. Here's the problem. The problem is that as black men, number one, first and foremost, there, there's a lack of cohesion. There's a lack of organized cultural thought because when you have a disproportionate number of males who are broke, bummy, have an Xbox in one hand, weed in the other to cope with their failure in life, even though I know you live in a system that engineers that, if you're not fighting the system, you've surrendered to it. And as a result, you have nothing to offer. A man cannot get female deference, not true female deference, when he hasn't demonstrated, now listen to this next part, when he hasn't demonstrated that he is able to outcompete the other males around him. That's where the problem comes in. So yes, you've been you've been sabotaged in some degrees. I understand that. But female nature is not going to allow any woman to submit to you until you show her that you can outcompete other men. Now, it's very obvious when you're dealing with athletes. He is obviously outcompeting other men. Obviously. You can see it. They have championships for it. Okay. But a woman cannot submit to a man who doesn't demonstrate he can do that in his own life. You have to be doing that in your circle of the world. You have to be out competing there too. That's why women don't dig, you know, dudes who are sitting on the porch and, and collecting dust. My pension pimps, dude, that ain't gonna work for you. She will exploit you, but she cannot respect you because you're no longer competing. So you're a walking paycheck, but you are not a competitor. Every woman wants that. Just as much as a man wants soft, feminine, and sexy, a woman wants competitive. And until we start having cohesion of a cultural code of competitiveness, the CCCC, Communist Party, but until we got that, you have no leverage. So they find one competitive black male over here and another one over here and you're unicorns and they're fighting to the death to have you. Okay, you really wanna have power? Have that as a group. There is no black manosphere, thank God. Used to be one, but we all see where that went. And furthermore, we don't need that. We just need black manhood. But as black men from the pimp days, yeah, I said it. The pimp days, the gang days, we've always been men who understood the code. Where we're messed up is to generate three generations of males raised by women. Women don't have a code. I said it. Women don't have a code. You can go scream and cry about it. Ah! It ain't going to change anything. Women don't have a code. Women submit. Jason, why do you say that? Take a look at how female inmates act and how male inmates act. I want the fellas to understand the epicenter of uh, messing with underage people is not males, it's females. Jason, did you say that? I damn sure did. You know why? Because in prison, men without females around to interfere hold each other to a standard. You can't be a male who's been touching on little kids and you be safe behind bars with a bunch of men, black, white, Latino, Asian, otherwise in environments where men make the rules. That dude can't walk among us out here on the streets. He can walk. And in the female prisons, women who touched on little boys don't get touched up in female prison. They sit there at the table with them. The dude who touches on kids, he can't sit at the table in the child room with the men. He can't sit among us. 
the females, they sitting there talking with her and doing laundry and every damn thing else. Now, out here on these streets, they talk a good game and squawk a good game. Put them behind bars, you find out what they really are. The women don't have a code like that. They don't. I, I just blew a bunch of dudes' minds tonight. They're like, ooh, hell, you never heard Rolo tell you that one. You didn't hear your red pill community tell you that one. Your black manosphere never illuminated that one. And for those of you who've been listening to me for over a decade, you know, I've been talking about that for over a decade. I pointed that out a decade ago. These other folks never mentioned it. So all those terms they use, just understand it's fruit of the poison tree. And now I've just given you one insight that points out, by the way, those guys never enlighten you like I just did. They, 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 they chip around the edges. A lot of what they're saying is outdated or it doesn't apply to us. You can't listen to them because they want empowerment for them. So they're coming, they're coming with rules they think are going to empower them and shut you out. I'm just like, okay, these are the ones that work for you. If black men get together and have a code of competitiveness, that's what raises everything else and changes the dynamic. You change the females by changing yourself. And the females will have no choice but to respond to the new paradigm. They are biologically engineered to do so. But that, that biological engineering also gives them a tendency to exploit you if you allow it. And they'll do it if they're allowed to, and they've certainly been encouraged by the government and the media and everything else. They've been encouraged to do this. So what black men need is a code. In the gangs, we got a code. In the prisons, we got a code. In the military, we got a code. In the pimp game, the streets, we got a code. Men have always done that. Where men's codes get compromised is when you interject women. Ladies, it's true. At a, you got a fella in there more worried about getting his hands on a woman than he is with being approved by the men. That's the one who's going to turn on us. That's the one who's going to sell us out. That's the one who's going to sabotage what we're doing. And they never do it for a dime. They what? just do it for the lowest gutter one. So if you really want to fix that, the black manosphere cannot do that. A code will, but you got to have one. And once you have a code that says, this is how we move, this is what we do. This is the level of performance we need to have. If you got a fellow over here who's whining at you because his money ain't right, his status ain't right, his intellect ain't right. It's like, okay, we got to put him through boot camp. We got to put him through boot camp and get him gained up. He don't get to sit over here with us struggling. It's like, get his ass over here so we can get him raised up. That's the way that's supposed to go. Women don't do that. They let you be a mama's boy the rest of your life. If he was actually among men who held him to a stand, it's like, okay, we ain't going to just leave you on the ground, but you, you got a man got to carry his weight. Okay. We see where there's some points you lacking. You wasn't taught this. You wasn't taught that. Okay. Get him straightened out. When you go, if a fella go to prison, that's what you find out on day one. What you don't know, you get a crash course. You go to the military. What you don't know, you get a crash course. You join a gang. What you don't know, you get a crash course out here in Single mother society, you just flopping around like a fish. That is what needs to change. I'll let you have Jason, the last I'm going to let I'm going to land my plane. I was, I, you, what you said was incredibly insightful. I will chime in and say this much: that uh, it, it, there is an issue with some of our women when they chime in or repeat white feminist talking points when they when they emote the quote unquote patriarchy to a community that does not have a patriarchy, which is, which is mind boggling. That one of the things that we need is a functional patriarchy for, for our black men. I was fortunate enough to have, have and still have a black father, an involved black father, always have, uh, always had him to this day. And I see the difference, but what you're telling me, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. But I, I guess what I, my last thing is, where do we get the traditional black masculinity and the code work that you're asking for when at every pinpoint there seems to be some way to knock it down? Even with this Michael B. Jordan thing, this man is not even 40 years old, multimillionaire. And right, he, but the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm the pointing time. it out, I'm doing it now. I mean, I'm just pointing out there and whatnot. Where does it come from, brother? It's biological. Nobody has to teach you manhood. Manhood is not something that somebody bestowed on us. It's a result of our biology. You are biologically wired to have manhood. 
you've been socialized to abandon it. Mm. So you've been socialized to ignore your biology. You've been told that's bad, that's wrong, that makes you a bad man, you're a bad person. So that's not natural selection, that's unnatural selection. You've been socialized into denying what you already know. So the real thing is about unlearning and undoing that socialization. If I leave five males alone on a desert island, masculinity is going to assert itself. What you call competence and performance, that's just another word for masculinity. That's all. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me jump back over here to Zoom. Let me see. I got Andre here on Zoom. I wonder if this is the fellow down there in Florida. Or if that is there. Wake up, Andre. All right, Andre, I'm going to give you five seconds here to go ahead and turn your camera on here. Let me go ahead and get that together. If Andre does not show up on here, permanent vacation. 60 seconds. Andre, you got three seconds here. Okay, Andre is sitting in the dark for some strange reason. He's trying to figure out his audio. Brother, are you on the run from Pablo Escobar? What is going on? Andre, I'm gonna give you five more seconds here because I think I think that might be the fella in Florida. So I don't think he's uh, if it's him, he's not trolling, but he's doing some weird stuff here tonight. Where's the light on, Andre? Okay, Andre, I do not know what's going on here tonight, man. You're not saying anything, so I gotta let you go. Ten. Check seconds. back with us next time when you get it together. All right, let me get caller from area code 917. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, good evening, Jason. This is Jim from Jamaica, New York. How are you doing tonight? All right, Jim from Jamaica. What's on your mind? Hi. Um, this whole conversation just reminded me of, of my high school experience, um, to be honest with you. I'm not a passport bro or anything, but in my high school experience, it's usually um, I'm not wasn't a typical uh black teenager, I guess you can say, like, you know, I didn't wear Tim's, baggy pants, second pants, you know, New York back in the 90s was mostly centralized around that. So I never got much attention from the black girls in my high school, but the Hispanics and, you know, Chinese, Japanese um, girls from Singapore and the Philippines paid attention to me. And it bothered the black girls more than anything because they were paying attention to me. It wasn't while I was seeking attention or anything, but, you know, they were saying passing, oh, I like this boy or that boy. And I never understood the dynamic, but they always, the black girls had a problem with me having uh, the the other girls attracted to me, and then they will try to dissuade the other girls from liking me, and I should, you know, like, stick with them and like them. And... I never understood that whole dynamic. Okay, so well, why they okay, well, like okay. And I need my callers to be a little bit more brief tonight because we're short on time now. Um, okay, let's find That's out a right, couple I'll, of I'll things. Let's take, find out a couple of things here first, though. Okay, mm-hmm. when I was in school, the Filipino chicks were more warming up to me than the black girls were. Interesting. Did you go to a public school, private school, magnet school? It was definitely public. Okay, was it the public school on the black side of town or the white side, sir? Black side. Okay. Next order of business here. Did you, what did you study in school? Like, did you take music, art, something like that? I took accounting and computers. Computer science. Yeah, but did you do anything else like music or art or something? No, no, no. Um, I was not musically inclined. I was mostly my sister, so no, no music. Okay, so you were doing math and computers. Were you any good at it? Mm-hmm. Yes, I was highly efficient. Were you very highly efficient? That tells me a lot right there. Were you very good at it? Yes, yes. Okay, there's your issue right there, sir. Mm. So what I'm saying is I'm pretty sure that you were nerdy and a bookworm. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you. I was, uh, okay. yeah, I was nerdy. Th- thank you. But, I, you know, was, sir, thank yes. you. 
And the point I'm trying to make is because, by the way, I understand that I was a little nerdy kid in school, too. But during my high school years, I learned how to be a lot more sociable. And what I'm saying is you were the dude here. Now, I'm not going to say you were the gay kid, but what I am saying is you were harmless. And there's a certain segment of females who the little harmless dude who you know, he's, he's almost like one of the girls that that's the kind of, they, they, they'll, there's a certain segment of females who will warm up to you among black girls in particular. And it's going to be hit or miss. They might have their little gay friend in high school, but if you ain't him, they're like, okay, we ain't going to, you're going to be all the way in or all the way out. And if you were not him, they're responding to you from that. See, it's not like you're some anomaly to them. You come from the same place they do. Only in your case, he's not quite behaving the way they would expect or whatever. And that's not really what they're checking for in that regard. So maybe more likely what it is, is the non-black females considered you to be non-threatening. And so they had no problem to your estimation, at least they seem to be friendlier than the black females were. I think what you're really trying to say is that they didn't have a problem approaching you. But that doesn't, well, uh, don't mistake that for something that it's not. So I'm pretty sure among the females, it's like with the black women, that's not really a positive thing. It really, really isn't. As far as you saying that they didn't want the other girls talking to you or whatever, I think you might be mistaking harassing curiosity with desire. Desire. What do you mean by that exactly? Because you know, I don't they, think I don't think they were. Tr I don't think they were trying to keep you away from the other females. I just think it was an ongoing campaign of they don't really know what to do with you. Okay, that 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 I could definitely accept. That I could definitely, it's you know, sitting up on now. Yes, they didn't know what that could do with me. I would say that I was sociable because I was a part of clubs like government. Um, um, homelessness, stuff like that, because I was a big, uh, big problem back where I was back then. So I really did converse with a lot of people. I did speak. Um, Nigga, please. Things. They, but in terms of what you said in, in that regard of being now their cup of tea, I understood that, and you're absolutely correct. But okay, was, sir, um, the desire part, that sir, that part was what you're so saying is just more. compounding it even more. Well, Jason, I think yeah, I, I was <laughs> I think I was sociable. I was a member of school clubs. What? I mean, he's not dude. Jason, I think I was pretty sociable. I was a member of 4H. See, uh, I see I see sociable. See people in the chat saying cool, but it's sociable. I I converse with people. It doesn't mean that okay. I was cool talking sir, about it. I did talk mm, to a lot of people. Okay, sir. It's, mm. You think you know what this word means? You don't. This is no. You 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 were sociable within your comfort zone. Females, particularly black women, because of our experience in America, period, they gravitate to a man who is a leader and an alpha. By definition, he's a guy who operates at a high level, regardless of a comfort zone. He doesn't have a comfort zone. He's comfortable wherever he is. And what you're telling me is there were Eric. That's why I asked you, by the way, what was your skill set? Were you talented? Was there something in particular that you focus on? Yeah, we got to it. He's a bookworm, computers, whatnot. You had specific areas of comfort. And you operated well within those areas of comfort. The real problem is the world is not your comfort zone. So the black females are looking for a guy who has the swag and the ability to make them comfortable. Yes, yes, that's true. You see, I, true. I I came from I, that. that. I, do say that. I, was all, I was the same way. I operated under the mistaken notion that the female just won't give a thug. And was, no, that's not it. I, I never lost my glasses. I never, I never got lost my glasses. I didn't start wearing contacts until I was grown. But even then, I never stopped wearing my glasses in school when I took on this mission to learn how to talk to other people. Now I did change the way I dressed to a certain degree. Sure. 
but I yeah, didn't. Yeah. Try, but I didn't try yeah. to emulate the street dudes or the football players or the in cats. I never tried to emulate them. I just chose something right, I felt was yeah. better and more comfortable for me. Next order of business no, I, was I, I, I okay. S- slow just, down, sir. The host is talking. Apologies. Next order of business is. I, there was no female who was off limits for me to talk to. So I made it a point. The chicks from the hood, the chicks who hung with the white girls, the religious girls, the overweight ones, the scrawny ones, the cheerleaders. If she had a set of ovaries, I didn't have an issue striking up a conversation with her. And what I realized is what the street dudes and the fellows, the class clowns, whatever, I realized something that they understood that you don't, you didn't. It's questionable if you got it now. Females are looking to be led. They're not, listen guys, well, Tomasi never taught you this. He can't. The rest of them can't. They don't know how. But by the way, power dynamics, females are not looking for a guy who wants to start a conversation. Females are looking for the guy who has a personality that he's already got an internal conversation going on. Nerds and bookworms don't talk to themselves. That's the reason they can't talk to other people or women. A guy who's got an internal monologue going on. When you meet somebody else, all you're really doing is bringing them into your internal monologue because the conversation already started with you. If I can get you to start talking to yourself, you can talk to anybody. That's what the street dudes do. They're always bobbing their heads to music and whatnot. They got an internal monologue going on. That's what the class clowns do. The football players, they get confidence. That's what they do. The nerds don't have it. If they're not reading the book or whatever, their brains are off. Much less when it comes to people. They're not running scenarios. These other dudes are running scenarios. So when they meet somebody else, they just turn this, they just bring them into the conversation that's already going on. Nobody taught you guys this. So you think there's a certain type of female you fit in with. Yeah, you fit in with one's got ovaries, but are you leading? Do you have a personality? If you do, then you've already got something to say when you pull up. It really becomes a matter of figuring out what you want to say. Say, yes, yes, you're absolutely right about that, yes. Well, it depends on what you want because the street dudes, if he's looking for some sex, he's looking for some drugs or whatever, he's already knowing what he's going to say. He's already got an agenda. You all are trying to meet a female first and get an agenda. Wrong. Have an agenda, then go talk to a woman. No, I know. I understand. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, it, it, like I say, it just it, like I say in high school it was like that. It took me maybe 15 years to realize even a portion of that, and then the rest was just like it felt. I don't want to say it fell into place, but just based off experience. Right, but you, but you, but, but you um, are you're doing what the passport bros doing. You're prescribing something on black women without acknowledging a simple fact: black females' experience in America is not the Asian females' experience. Therefore, what her expectations will be different than the Asians socially. Now, if they had the same experience the Asians did, it would happen that way. So you're perceiving it that way because they have a different experience and you didn't calibrate to that very well. So you've interpreted it a certain way. In reality, what they were saying was they do not see it when they when the black females talk to you, they did not see a social leader. They saw a nice guy with computers. They did not see a male they could submit to. And neither did the Asian females. They didn't see one to submit to either. They were just more comfortable with your softness. Comfortable. Yeah, you're right about the comfortable part now, thinking about it. You're right, because, you know, the agenda part, what you said was, you know, now that I have that, you know, it's a lot easier to talk, like, you know, generally to every, any woman. And, you know, it's like, I know what I want is do they qualify or do they even offer of what I want? And black females, really black know, females so are different. raised in a more aggressive environment. They're raised in a more oppressive yes. system. Soft black females learn early that soft, comfortable dudes get eaten. 
So when you start projecting that soft comfortableness, she's like, oh no, he, he's not ready for the rigors of what we got to deal with. Then she goes to look for somebody who is, and if she's stupid enough to have a bunch of bastard kids with him, she's going to be in the wilderness for so long. And then she's going to circle back to you because, oh, well, he's soft and comfortable. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight, but don't, don't mistake that. She's not circling back because you had all of a sudden she sees you're a better, that you're a better person. It's like, well, let me see if Mr. Soft and Comfortable can be gotten over on easier. And in many cases they can. So I want you to understand women. Notice nothing I said was denigrating. Nothing I said was negative. These are not negative aspects on black women or Asian women for that matter. They're, they're women. When you understand them, then you're not angry or bitter about that. You're not holding it against them. These chicks over here treat me different. There's a reason and a rationale for it. They were responding to what they encountered. You were not comfortable with them and they could see it. The little Asian females, according to your testimony, were comfortable with it. But that doesn't mean that the black girls were wrong. Because she's like, by the way, if this is how what he is now, what is he going to be in 10 years? Fellas, just understand for a lot of you who are still holding grudges from your high school days, maybe you're a little bit older now and you, you're starting to have to learn how to project how other people are going to develop over the course of a decade. When, them, when the girls in high school saw how you were, it's like, wait a minute, if he's soft and recessive now, why should I think he's going to be any different in 10 years? He'll just be more of what he already is. In many cases, many of you guys are. So is it really that the females are screwed up or whatever? Is it really that eh, they actually use some critical thinking? Maybe you didn't like being on that end of it. And she hasn't been able to judge you as a protector and provider. So she's just judging all the males on their physicality or what they do or how well they establish themselves in that controlled social environment. If you're not meeting the grade, eh, it can be some kind of way. Let me get called from Erico 415. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you call? Marcus from San Francisco. Okay, Marcus from San Francisco, what's on your mind? Oh, I, I had a question regarding you know, what you kind of what you're talking about about when the call it before uh, earlier tonight. Uh, my uh, basically my ex, she uh, it was kind of um, kind of surprising to me that you said that they would that they raise their they raise their kids to be, you know, especially the boys to be weak and soft and independent. And one time one time when when, she, when her son needed some money because, you know, he got himself into a situation with his car, his car was jacked up and she had the money to either go on vacation or help him out with the bill. She chose the vacation. And I was just surprised. I thought that usually don't the women love their kids more or they it just was shocking to me. That made me. That's why I broke up with her for that reason. Because I knew she didn't take care of her kid. And that kid came out. I knew I didn't stand a chance. So I demoted her. And then, she, then we eventually broke up. So I was just wondering, what, why that? Why did, does that, that occur a lot? Or that was surprising. No, I mean females. Is, females as a group, ladies, just reality here. Females are self-centered. So, and especially if you're dealing with a single mom, eh, she became a single mom for a reason. So everything revolves around her. Children are the means to an end. She's not trying, if she, if she isn't trying to be a wife, she just showed you, I'm not trying to be a mother. I just want some kids. Generally speaking, they get kids because they are so insufferable that adults don't want to be around them. So they go give birth to some playmates. But when real responsibility rears its ugly head, she shows you that nah, I ain't really interested in that. So just recognize that before you get there. You can't, you can't expect any differently. And yes, they're all the same. They will all try to convince you they're different. No, they're not. They're all the same. You'll find out if oh, it's your, so when, it's, no, when no. it's your turn, then they show you that they're, like, they're all the same. Cause when you first met her, she wasn't acting like that. Once she got comfortable with you, now the real thing comes out. Yeah, 
Yeah, in the chat room, Chris B. Ask, yeah, in the chat room, Chris B. makes a very good point there. He made a quote: "I'm tired of being a mother." Uh, very good point, Chris, because isn't that what they say when they're married? I'm tired of being married. I'm not happy. What does she do? I'm leaving. Okay, well, when she's, quote, tired of raising the kids and she's not happy doing that, what does she do? I'm leaving. Simple as that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. And for the ladies here, we just we we just having some having some straight talk and some real conversation about that. That's all. It's not about denigrating anybody. It's just let's go ahead and get down to brass tacks and call it for what it really is. Let's just call it for what it really is. I've got a video roll of females on your screen who's shown you, hey, it's all about them. Now they were married to these men. And, uh, maybe it's all about you. And as soon as she's like, I'm in the position of power and authority. Okay, it's all about me now. Exploitation. Here we come. And then to have the nerve to try to compel and shame Michael B. Jordan into putting himself in a disadvantageous position. No, Michael. Enjoy this summer and all the other summers and seasons to come. You've worked very hard from a very young age, Michael, to give yourself options. You don't owe it to females who failed and screwed themselves up to sacrifice your options just because they don't have them. They had their chance. They made their choices. And you're not obligated to redeem them for their choices. Tia, Jody, Lala, get your ass in line and put in your side chick application. What? That's all you need to do now. Stop sitting up here trying to shame men and badger them and every damn thing else. Y'all help us get your asses in line. Put in your side chick application. Let it be what it's going to be. All you're doing right now is bull jiving. You're trying to fool the world into thinking that there's some productive simp out there who's going to swoop in at the last moment and save your raggedy ass. And the truth of the matter is, if Tia Mowry got married tomorrow to Michael B. Jordan, within two years, she would be saying he's soft and lame and she's bored. Or all three. She would just be saying, well, I'm bored. What she needs to do is keep doing what she's qualified for. Get you a side chick position and let a fella sit up here and see you when he come through and you can be a damn disciplinary problem the rest of the damn year if you want to be. But you cannot be a man's only option. You demonstrated that you can't handle that. You're not fit for it. A man needs to have absolute peace when he's finished gunfighting with the world and you've shown that you will not do that. Therefore, a man would be a damn mustard and gravy flinging fool to make you his only option when you will not give him what he needs most. Same thing for you, Jody. Same thing for you, Lala. Carmelo made you a straight deal. You knew what it was and you wouldn't stick to the rules. Why would any other man be stupid enough to make you his only option? When you've clearly demonstrated you won't abide by the rules. A man would be ignorant and dumb as hell to make you his only option. If he's put all his eggs in your basket, he's depending on that. He's depending on you to be the person he can talk to without judgment and give him serenity and give him understanding and give him respect. He's depending on you. Look here, Jasmine. Uh, uh, look here. She was an outside chick. What you talking about? That man was moving like that when she met him. 
She wanted a nigga in the league. We've known about the way they get down since Wilt Chamberlain. What the hell you talking about, outside kid? That's what niggas in the league do. That's not some surprise. He had other women when she met him. She thought she wrestled him away from them because she's like, okay, I'm next in line. It's like he had a woman when you met him. Like this, well, you know, there was an outside kid and she was the outside chick. Them the rules. She knew what she was getting. I'll be damned. You knew what the hell you was getting. That's why I can't feel sorry for a nigga. Did you just say nigga? I so did. And deal with it, nigga. I can't feel sorry for a nigga get up here out here and gets his ass rolled by some chick from Instagram. I can't feel sorry for you. She had an Instagram and the OnlyFans. You know the deal. You know the deal. How the hell am I get mad at her? She been flopping them butt cheeks on Instagram for five years. Dude, you can't claim ignorance. You knew what it was. and You said, I want a piece of that. How am I going to get mad at her? Because she gave you a piece of it. You said, I wanted to see what that going to be like. She showed you what it was going to be like. And I'm supposed to get mad at her? So she wrong. I've called Brittany Renner delusional, and she is. Whacked out, psycho, everything else. But, hey, PJ Washington, nigga, wasn't nothing she did, not legit. You knew what she was when she rolled up on you. You fought to get it, and congratulations. You found out, be careful what you wish for, and be more careful what you work for. So you can't be mad at Carmelo because Carmelo was Carmelo. You know damn well one chick ain't gonna make it for him. And you know damn well he don't give a damn about getting somebody pregnant if he think he got the money to support it. That's what niggas in the league do. No, Lala could have got her some square ass third stringer who rides the bench. You know what Lala said when you said that to her? That's what Lala said. There are plenty of square dudes in the NBA she could have got with. Plenty of square dudes. No, she wanted a big baller. She wanted a fellow whose money was stacked deep. She wanted a fellow who made the lady swoon and she got him. She wanted a fellow who was in these streets because she wanted to prove something. Well, congratulations, you proved it. You got your position. Now we'll see if you can hold it. But there were plenty of other dudes. She like, no, you too lame. You don't make enough money. You ain't got enough status. You ain't got enough swag. I can't go and brag on you at the NBA parties and All-Star Weekend. I can't brag on you. Let me go see what Mello talking about. Well, she heard what Mello was talking about. I'll be damned if we're going to sit up here and, and, and condemn him for being who he is. When everybody saw it and still sees it today. No, you got what you paid for. You got what you paid for. He didn't switch up on you. That nigga was in them streets when you met him. Now you're going to get mad because he's still in them streets. That was what you fought for, Lala. You fought for that. You bragged about it. Yeah, this sex got him away from these other chicks, or so you thought. My sex is gold-plated. My sex make the birds sing. Then she found out, no, you just another chick with a vagina. Just You're just another one. And now yours has gotten old to him. And now he's looking for a new thrill. The thrill is gone. Shout out B.B. King. But you got with him because you were thrill seeking. And what you found out is welcome to the game. Welcome to the game. No, fellas. 
Get the bag right. Get your swag right. Get yourself in a position where you are desired and preferred. And then go enjoy yourself. And if one day you wish to settle down with one female, if that is your choice, then by all means do so. I would only wish for you that you do so from a position of strength, mastery, and control. That you are not letting other people bully you and control you. That you've made decisions, you've lived long enough and experienced enough and witnessed enough that you choose wisely with the female. But you make these choices on your timeline. The women went out here and said they don't need no man. And then when they're all mostly lonely, now they're all screaming, I need a man. So we need all you men to stop what you're doing, drop what you're doing, and come accommodate us. Nobody. What needs to happen now is the men need to focus on themselves. The women have focused on themselves to the detriment of everything around them. They need The men need to focus on themselves now. Fellas, focus on being the best, highest quality of male you can possibly be. Focus on making sure when you go to the bank, to the car dealership, to the church, if you're the one, two guys still there, to the uh, fraternity party, for the one, two guys there, y'all fellas bogus. But at the job, at the chamber of commerce, uh, at the swap meet, at the Kiwanis club, and when you're around females, you make sure you that dude. That's all you work on. You focus on being the dude wherever you are. No, that don't mean imitating Lil Wayne. You be the dude in and of yourself. You set the rules. You be that fella. Wherever you are. With everything you do. And sit back and feel the breeze. You make sure you get yourself together so that you got all the options that you want. Not all the options that other people think you should have. Do you think Michael B. Jordan should date one of these Hollywood ladies? Hell no! Michael B. Jordan need to date them all if that's what he wants. He should be a, Michael B. Jordan should date all these Hollywood ladies or none of them. He should move however he want to move. If he just want to tiptoe through on a weekend and put them back on a plane, Mike, be like Mike. Do that. Don't let anybody make rules for you. Don't let anyone put limitations on you. They're not limit. When the women go back to limiting themselves, then maybe the men can reconsider. But right now, fellas, it's a damn free for all. That's it. You don't see wife. That's not three pieces of wife material up there. Those are three problems. For the man dumb enough to make a commitment to them, they're a problem. No, you leave them in the lane they want to be in. They only want to be somebody's woman when it suits them. Well, you know what? That sounds like you need to be my woman for about 30 minutes. After that, bye. Maybe you can be the woman for the weekend. After that, bye. No, I'm not being mean or nasty about it. What I'm saying is enough of trying to police black men's sexuality, options, and choices. The women are out here saying, let me go ahead and drag my drawers through the street and no one should say anything. But the men need to take a vow of chastity. No, that's trying to condition the men to set themselves up to be exploited. Michael B. Jordan has all the options in the world. Why should he not have a female with all the options in the world? You got females up there who are disciplinary problems and they've handcuffed themselves. Now you're trying to tell black men that, okay, since you all will not follow Russell Wilson's example because he's a beta simp dud, let's see if we can condition you through Michael B. Jordan and shame you. I'm here tonight to shine the light of day. Be like Mike. Mike is out here. He's enjoying himself. He isn't letting anybody put limitations on him. He's saying, hey, look, I ain't looking. I mean, it'd be nice, but I ain't looking. I'm free. Mike, be free. Tom Petty, free falling. Or in your case, Michael, 
free balling. I'm all for it. Fellas, get yourselves together. Be the highest caliber of man you can. Get you your pilot's license. Get you your sailing license so you can get out there in the bay on your yacht. New Year's Eve, have the chick sitting up there in Miami on your yacht with the pool in it. Do what you do. Go enjoy yourself. And if somebody presents themselves as proper wife material, okay, then you can make that change over if you want to. But until then, no, that that day is over. The era of policing black men's options is dead and gone. Let's be clear about why they want to police your options. If you, if we were talking about Pookie, they wouldn't give a damn what your options were. When a black male is a pookie and a deadbeat, nobody's trying to police his options. It's the most valuable men who are meeting the pressure. It's the most valuable men who got folks wagging their fingers and trying to lecture us. It's the most valuable men that folks are trying to put chains and shackles on. Not the deadbeats. And what I'm saying is, fellas, it's not a free ride. Get your value up. Get your brain together. Be the most interesting man in the room. You saw those Dos Equis commercials. Hey, dude, old boy wasn't sagging no pants, nothing else. He ain't dressing like a game. Do that. Become the most interesting guy in the room. And then watch the women gravitate to you and take your choice and your pick. You can take one, you can take two, you can take all and enjoy yourself. You make the rules. You make the rules. No, Nick Cannon is not. No, doesn't. Somebody educate him about Nick. He's given a bunch of women control over him. Some of you fellas need to be updated. In this. No, sir, no. And furthermore, you cannot, he doesn't have kids. I'm, I'm, I spent three hours talking about this. And, Nick cannot be, okay. If you handle your business, but your problem, he's not handling his business. Problem, he's not handling his business. Okay. Somebody gave him up. Let me go ahead and get ready to wrap things up here. Don't give me another rant about it. Shout out Michael B. Jordan. Keep shining. Keep shining, Mike. Don't let them, don't let them sit up here and stain the game. Don't let them put smear marks on the game. Don't let them do that. And to all the fellas out there listening to me right now, do not let these folks control you. As long as you are responsible and you're not making any permanent attachments, no rings, no kids, man, ain't nobody going to got the right to tell you a damn thing. Move how you want to move. As the only thing that I would require from you beyond that is the females need to know what they're getting into. If you are non-exclusive, Say that from day one. Stop being cowards. Stop being afraid and stop being liars. If you are non-exclusive, say that from day one. Let her fit into your plans. Don't be dodging people. Don't be hiding your cell phone. Don't be hiding numbers. Don't be trying to use separate cars. Don't have a separate cell phone. Be a damn man. Tell her, hey, no questions. Tell her you got to qualify for your position. And the moment you start giving me trouble about it, you got to go. Let it be what it's going to be. Fellas, if your value is up there, she going to go with it. She going to squawk a little bit. She going to go with it. If she starts squawking, what she's telling you is your value isn't high enough. Okay, fellas, that's the game. But be honest. Tell her straight up, this is what it is. I'm not going to be arguing with you. I'm not going to be fighting with you. I'm not going to be hearing you nag me. This is what it is. You're going to make this decision with your eyes wide open because I'm not going to change what I'm doing. And I'm not going to let you bully me, nag me or badger me into doing something different. This is what it is. Roll with it or roll out. And fellas, women respect that. Women respect that. No, they don't have a code. When they get on social media, they're going to tell the rest of the females, 
I would never do that. She hang up the phone. Next thing you know, she doing that. Stop letting them police your options. Become a man who has options and don't let them police them. And to the ladies out there who don't like it, hey, y'all change the game. All we're doing is adapting. All we're doing is adapting to the game being changed. That's all. And every game has winners and every game has losers. And the men been losing for the last damn five decades. And the men have been losing for half a century now. In court, in social media, in corporate media, television, politics, the men been getting their asses handed to us now for half a century. And what's been demonstrated is they ain't gonna stop doing it. As long as we let them take advantage of us, they will just keep going and they'll get worse. Hell, now they've gotten sadistic. So no, these are the rules. These are the rules. You can be mad, you can go ballistic, you can go out of your damn mind, you can write crazy articles, you can do whatever. Guess what? Tiger Woods showed you what the rules are now. Old girl was down there with him in Florida all that damn time and she said, you know what? I'm going to try to mess everything up. And Tiger's like, you can do whatever you want to do at the end of this. You're going to be gone. And guess what? She's gone. And guess what? Tiger Woods isn't alone tonight. I guarantee you. He's just not with her. His money's still straight. His status is still straight. Everything's still rolling. The only thing that's changed is, eh, He's not with her anymore. And he's loving having that as an option. Imagine if he had married her, had kids with her. Yeah, when it was time to send her away, he could do something that Tia Maori's ex-husband, Lala Anthony's ex-husband, and Jody Smith's ex-husband can't do. He can get up and leave. Or better yet, tell her, get up and leave. Plenty of life lessons to be learned there. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we are here. If you haven't been to our patron, the link is in the description. We do it every weekend, 12 noon central time. You are, of course, invited to join us. I want to thank everyone here who has contributed to tonight's nice program. Mr. Ugo, uh, Mr. Benjamin. Mr. Everyone else there who has contributed here tonight, thank you very much for your support. Thank you to all of you for tuning in live or recorded. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your options will handle you.